Hey everybody, tonight we're debating Flat Earth versus Globe Earth, and we are starting right now with the Flat Earth team's opening statement. Thanks so much for being with us. Karen B., the floor is all yours. Hi, my name's Karen B., and I'm here to say that the Earth is flat. Why do I think the Earth is flat? Well, because I participated in two independent measurements, direct measurements of the Earth for curvature, and both times curvature was not measured. Once over the Lake Balaton in Hungary, which is the largest lake, landlocked lake over there in Europe. And also we did a measurement of Earth's curvature in Denver, Colorado, using survey equipment over land. And that also showed no trend for curve curvature in either direction. Also, I remember visibly seeing the Farallon Islands from San Francisco, the coast of San Francisco, and they're about 30 miles away from the coast of San Francisco, and they're not even more than 110 feet tall, so you shouldn't be able to see them all. They should be behind the curvature, yet you can see them on a clear day. And so that is why I think the Earth is flat. What's it? <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, so I always point out that really... The main critique is everyone says, you guys think there's flat, where's your model? Answer all these questions. What exactly is going on? Blah, blah, blah. And I, I consider that to be a very dishonest way to go about this because there's a positive claim on the table that we were all tied and that it's that the Earth's a ball with a certain size and very specific claims. So if you want to be honest and look into it, you need to just see if that claim is true before you, you know, get ahead of yourself and you're like, well, how would all this other stuff work? We need to figure out if that's true. And like Karen B said, I have similar experiences. I went around the whole U.S. doing the same thing. So we've done laser tests. We've done mirror flashes. We've done long distance observations. You know, we have some observations where you see mountains from hundreds of miles away. The globe position is that it's just an illusion. It's not really there, but it clearly is. We're sitting there seeing what it is, where it is. So anyway, um, there's just no actual evidence when you look into it that the earth is a spinning ball. And so an honest position. Now, what the critique will be is, oh, they're just detaching themselves from the burden of proof, or they don't want to answer the questions or whatever. But again, an intellectually honest position is, well, if we're claiming this is exactly what the earth is, a spinning ball with a certain size, we need to figure out if that's true. That's the first step. Then we can go trying to figure it out, right? Uh, flat's not a shape. It's a description of a surface. So long story short, there's tons of evidence that debunks what they claim. And we can see that the earth is uh, provably and measurably a topographical plane. Uh, we're not allowed to freely explore the whole earth. So we don't have to know exactly what the earth is. We don't have to know what all is on the earth. That's kind of ridiculous, you know? So uh, in summary, we just need actual empirical verifiable evidence of this alleged curvature, this alleged spin and revolution and this alleged vacuum. None of that exists. And uh, yeah, all evidence shows us that the earth's a stationary topographical plane, which means it's geocentric in the center of all things. And uh, yeah, we're still waiting for this proof of this alleged curvature and spin. So that's kind of the problem. We falsify what they told us. It isn't true. And we're waiting for empirical evidence void of begging the question fallacies. So uh, there you go. You got it. Thank you very much for that opening from the Flat Earth team. And want to say, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, we are a neutral channel hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. We hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you are from, whether you be Flat Earth, Globe Earth, Christian, Atheist, politically left, politically right, you name it. We're glad you're here. We hope you feel welcome. And hey, if you haven't seen it, at the bottom right of your screen, King Crocoduck returns for an epic debate against David McQueen. Creationism on trial. You don't want to miss it. Hit that subscribe button as that debate is coming up this month, and you don't want to miss it. So hit subscribe, and with that, we're going to jump over to our Globe Earth team. Thanks for being with us as well. Amy and Taylor, the floor is all yours. Oh, you're on mute, Taylor. Should I go first, Amy? Sure. I'm good with either okay. way, but if you're ready. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. All right. I have got a little bit of a janky setup right now because my computer is not cooperating. But let me know if everything, if uh, I need to adjust anything, and I'll jump right in. So, um, the main things that I see from Flat Earth is a basic misunderstanding of uh, simple physics, geometry, and optics to name the basic, uh, the, uh, the most important things, um, and which understood properly can explain and demonstrate the Earth's round shape. Um, so there's a couple ways beyond that, uh, that 
we can use, there is actually a live feed of the Earth from space. It's called the, uh, well, the one I like, I'm sure there's others, but it's called the Himawari 8 uh, weather satellite. It's a live feed. You can see the entire globe. It's not a uh, compilation of pictures. And uh, it so it can't be faked because you can check the live weather patterns. Um, Flat Earther Jaronism proved that the Earth is curved when he did his uh, famous experiment where his friend went out on the lake and he had to lift the light to get over the curve. Um, and and uh, speaking of seeing stuff behind curves, um, refraction can actually account for seeing further than the actual physical curve is. But refraction cannot account for that if the Earth is in fact flat. It can only refract uh, on a, uh, a circular planet or surface. And uh, thankfully, I've got a whiteboard behind me so I can explain that uh, in later if we get into that but basically since the atmosphere is curved the light's going to hit the curved atmosphere that's different densities and it will refract around on a flat earth it's all the same uh, density in a straight line so there's no it's not hitting different densities and bouncing like refraction would require so refraction only happens on a globe um, you do actually need a model because this is a flat earth debate. This is not globe on trial debate. Um, and it's really funny that uh, all attempts to put even globe people try to put the earth on a flat surface and it doesn't work. Flat maps don't work accurately. So um, that's a problem. Um, and uh Let's see. So the basically how perspective works is we're taught on a flat surface like an art class that we can draw those straight lines and the horizon converges with that. When you draw the on a flat earth, it should work like that. On the real earth, it falls below that line. So that's one thing um, with the the curvature, we can observe that over lakes like Lake Pontchartrain. Um, we can observe the both the water and the causeway curving over the horizon and dropping lower than a linear perspective would. Um, and uh, again, refraction cannot cause this effect if the Earth is flat. Um, geometry, I, I wish I had my slideshow, but the... Uh, the fact that uh, the stars spin in opposite directions on opposite sides of the globe is impossible on a flat Earth. In fact, flat is the only shape of the Earth that does not work um, with that. Because if we were on a flat Earth and the stars are spinning in opposite directions, then that means that the stars are getting farther and closer to each other. And that's never been observed. Um, in fact, we observe that they're all the same relative distance from each other. Um, basically gravity, if you understand gravity, you understand why air and water hold to the surface of, uh, to hold to a curved surface and why the surface is in fact curved because everything falls in the same direction. Um, and, uh, those are my main points other than the, uh, and I'll help out, uh, with it because last time. We moved on before I could answer his question about the Cavendish experiment, which demonstrates gravity. Um, so uh, the independent variable is the mass of the torsion bar uh, is, yeah. And uh, the dependent variable is the direction of movement. So mass accelerates towards mass. It's a proven, gravity is a proven phenomenon. And um, those are my basic points. Um, I'd really like to stick to the gravity thing. And uh, go ahead, Amy. Thank you so very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Amy Newman. I create skeptic content along with my co-host, James W. at youtube.com slash Amy Newman as I am a comedian, counter-apologist, and multimedia 
enthusiast with degrees in graphic design, game development, film and motion graphics with a specialization in visual effects, education, and information technology, which is what makes topics like the flat verse globe so much fun because there are videos hell live feeds from the International Space Station 24-7, 365 of the Earth being round from space. But when it comes to a flat Earth, all we get are cartoon representations of something like a dome, or as they sometimes call it, a firmament from biblical cosmology. But more on that later. Let's first talk about why the world is round, because We've known this for thousands of years. Ancient Greeks like Eratosthenes, along with his counterparts, would record shadows from cities hundreds of miles apart. He began to notice that directly overhead at noon, there was no shadow in Cyan, but a very long shadow at Alexandria, something only possible on a round earth. Though would become useful thousands of years later as time zones allow us to figure out what part of our day-night cycle we're on. Pilots take advantage of the round earth by bypassing the side. In, uh, instead of going over the top, they could just save some money. Look at that. Wow, right over the top. Another touchy subject for conspiracy theorists. I know, but again, more on that later. In fact, circumnavigating the Earth by heading in the same direction is another way that we know the Earth is round. Because on a, fi on a flat plane of any finite length, you will eventually find an edge. All of the water would end up falling off of said edge like you would expect trying to drink from a dinner plate or a disc. Yet this seems to never happen. In fact, it appears we live on a giant, massive ball, like the vast majority of giant celestial objects. Sun, round. Moon, round. Literally every other planet, round, round, and around we go. Yet a flat earther will try to sell you that the earth is flat while none of these physical laws of nature matter. And why? Well, because we're God's special creation. Oh, which is the seedling or possibly the root of the problem here tonight. Though, don't take my word for it. Ask your local flurf. Quote, you can't really be a flat earther and an atheist. End quote. Wits it, gets it. Though if religion is the seed and the flat earth is the fruit of this rotten tree, then conspiracy theory would be the stem. You see, this kind of mindset that we're dealing with is conspiracy theories, the types that have not met a conspiracy that they don't love. But I wish I was being hyperbolic. Flat Earth, sure, but anti-vax, 7-Eleven was a part-time job, the ether is real, gravity isn't real, space isn't real, the atomic theory isn't real. Whoa, 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 whoa. What these people are trying to sell you is science isn't real because the entire process of science is removing human bias from the question. If someone asks, well, did you take that test for yourself? You might be talking with someone who rejects science, though it will be something we asked of flat earthers since they are not in the scientific consensus, thus the burden of proof will be on them to come up with their own model instead of acting uh, 
within mainstream science and saying, oh, mainstream left. triggers me. Left. Are you going to accept what the media has told you? Don't you know they're only trying to make money? Well, sure, 24-7 cable news is horrible. The peer review system by which people formulate a hypothesis, go out into the field for research, collect data, then submit their results. Yeah, that's still fantastic. In fact, it's the only way we can separate fact from fiction. So all we have left to really deal with is the root of the problem. While I could say religion, what I mean is superstition. You see, liberal, conservative, atheist, theist, we can all be prone to believing bullshit. Sometimes that comes from a fundamentalist view of a holy text. Other times it's crystals, vibrations, and magnets. The key here, it's not a science debate because science is about testable working theories. This is about theories versus conspiracy theories, or rather what tools we use in our epistemological toolkit. Thank you. Thank you very much for that opening from Snake and Amy, a.k.a. Snake slash Taylor Synonymous. But want to say, folks, thanks for being with us. If you happen to have a question, you can at me in the live chat, as well as if you do a super chat, we put those questions at the top of the list. We'll have Q&A after the open discussion. Thanks very much for being with us. Wits it gets it. Karen B., Amy, and Taylor, the floor is all yours for open dialogue. So, guys, since my uh, understanding of gravity no, uh, proves dude, that the Earth is round, anger, um, how about you educate me on what I'm getting wrong about gravity and why do things fall towards the ground and not sideways? Okay. Right after we address your guys' monologue, though. So, uh, why you do you dodge Hamilton, the question? Wait, wait, dude, I want to address the intro, okay? So, you claimed Himawari proves that the Earth's a ball. And that it shows us live time footage of live time weather patterns. And so therefore it couldn't be fixed. That's patently false though, my man. It takes a minimum of 10 minutes delay, admittedly, before they even give you any type of image. And secondly, you claim that star trails in the South debunk it. And then you said that's impossible. It's only possible. It's possible in every shape except for flat, which in my intro of the three things I said, I helped you out and said, flat's not a shape, bro. So when you guys say flat's a shape, it sounds really ridiculous. It's a description of a surface. You can have a flat square, circle, triangle, you name it. Okay. Then you brought up Cavendish. We'll talk about that since that's what you want to talk about. And then Amy said you'd find fall off the edge. You can't go past 60 south latitude. So there's actual no proof of any of the stuff that you guys are saying. It was a bunch of sophistry. So I just wanted to address your intro. All right. Go ahead. What's your what's your question? You're asking me to explain gravity. Yeah, and then after you ask that question, I want to know why you wouldn't fall off an edge because that's not right. So I want to know why you think otherwise. Yeah. So well, well, you Amy, can't go would past you the like 60th South Latitude? It's illegal to go past there. Can you fall off the edge of a lake? No. He's a gentleman. Cannot. It's the law that's keeping him from finding out the truth. They can't send drones up past a certain feet because that would really hurt their feelings. They can't figure out how to do a drone themselves. They can't figure out how to get through Antarctica themselves, even though. People go to Antarctica and have won world records. Okay, so you can't freely and privately explore past the 60th South Latitude. You can only go where you're on an approved guided tour. You asked if we could fall off the edge. You can't fall off the edge of a lake. So, so that's a so ridiculous get approval. question. There's something. Oh, there's get something. approval. You know, yeah, but what if they don't? Why haven't you there? gotten approval? Because I you know can travel that, there. You can only, buy a ticket. Only where they let you go. Uh, yeah, you, you can explore. Comprehending you could do the same thing. How about you go get approval and go do that trans content, that transpolar trip and prove that the Earth is a We're globe? I mean, you guys could do the same consensus? thing. So that is like a really ridiculous argument there because you can, it's easy to prove the Earth is not a globe without going anywhere in, from the first place without risking your life. But if you think, it would, you know, if you guys claim the Earth is a globe, you, that's a positive claim. Go prove it go go from one pole to the other so first of all it sounds like austin said Wooder's not falling off the edge because i didn't go there so him not going there is physically keeping water falling off the no you guys earth. interrupted and, me oh I, I, okay well let me finish the point finish your straw man fallacy okay so go I'm ahead. moving over to karen uh, is the <laughs> the reason why we don't have to do the test is because we're defending the scientific consensus. You're going against the scientific consensus. You're trying to present your own model. And if you're just saying, I'm asking questions, scientists don't care. Your views aren't going to be taught in science textbooks. 
Okay, so for one, science is antithetical to consensus. You seem to not comprehend that it has nothing to do with what other people think. Secondly, I was explaining that you, for one, can't go past the 60th South Latitude privately and freely, and then people have actually been intercepted trying to do so. Thirdly, you actually don't fall off the edge of a lake, so there's something containing it. Antarctica is known to have the highest elevation in the world. Fourthly, the necessary antecedent to gas pressure is a physical container. Therefore, there could be something literally coming down and keeping that gas pressure here. Therefore, you wouldn't be able to go past it or through it, much less fall off. Off of it, it's a baseless assertion where in which you want to escape past the fact that you have no idea what's past there either. How interesting! Contain it. What is containing it? Uh, we don't have to make a claim as to what it is. It's a necessary antecedent. Well, water is apparently you can't... falling off the edge. We don't. We you haven't been to that. Do- there's. Uh, oh, I shouldn't say the D word. Everybody said um, there was an edge. No I one keep said saying it's that. a flat. So it's an infinite plane, right? It doesn't have an edge. It's an infinite. It, I don't know. On forever. We're, we're claiming that there's a if there's a container, it would touch down <laughs> on the earth. Can you fall off of it? Say that again. If there was a container containing the gas pressure and it touched down on the earth, could you fall off the earth? Can you prove there's a container? I just now explained to you, my man. It's illegal to privately traverse past a 60th south latitude. You must not be listening. Yeah, you can explore anywhere on earth. You cannot privately and freely explore yes. past the 60th South Latitude. Who's going to stop you? Uh, different military, military organizations. Are you, dude, are you literally no. the no. military is not allowed there? This is why you are the best what? recruiters for Flat Earth ever, just in case you were wondering, because you guys have no. to lie. This is why you're trying and to And you have to interrupt me. me. No, so, you just lie. Uh, gotta earn those shots so, yeah, there's no. Lie. All right, there's three people and, speaking oh at gosh. once, so quiet, just so we can hear. What, it doesn't make sense. It cancels out the purpose of having the panel of the people speaking over each other because then they can't hear anybody. So just want to be sure. Uh, let's see. Karen, we haven't heard a lot from you. So if you have something to say, we'll kick it over to Karen. Otherwise, we'll kick it over to Taylor. Karen, any Okay, thoughts? well, first of all, I've talked to a man firsthand that I know personally who worked for NASA. And when he worked for NASA, he actually spent time working at both poles. He worked at the North Pole and at the South Pole, the quote-unquote South Pole. And he also... T- believes that the earth is flat knows that the earth is flat because he didn't see the sun's disc the whole time he was there i mean there's and and the whole time he was there he was on a military base of course you have to be military to, to go to to go to antarctica there is no roaming around down there and not to mention the fact that it is an extremely more uh harsh environment than the north pole it's not it's not equal like in the north when it's summertime in the north you can go to the north and you can watch the sun go around and it's actually kind of pleasant there but it's not the same in antarctica it's 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 much more colder and there's no flora and fauna there all those penguins on the shore and that's it it's different it's completely different so why isn't it the same if the earth is a globe like the way it should way it's described it doesn't even make sense what have you got taylor um, you could go around the military bases in a very short circle instead of around it, the entire globe in a big circle. So you can actually figure out the direction. You could just go around the military bases and it will be an enclosed circle, not the outside of a flat disk or oh, whatever. Have you done that? Any flat object. Have you done that? Have you? You can do this privately. They won't stop you. No, you can't. You can't go past yes, the Yes, no, you can. cannot. Can you no. listen to what I just said? Go around that latitude and look at the military bases. You wouldn't the whole get anywhere time. near the military bases it because be... 60, at 60 degrees, you can't even see the shoreline of Antarctica, dude. And I'm also done. notice what they're saying. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. You can go around it. You could go, but they're stopping you. It's the it's, government. What do you watch the they news? They literally do Amy, stop it's you. not a conspiracy. It's called the Antarctic Treaty, which has tons of subsequent legislation that is easily accessible. You can go read it. It's illegal to it? privately and freely explore past the 60th South latitude. That's objective. You guys are saying no. Because you can yeah, go. There. How come? Mm-hmm. And how come the Antarctic Treaty bans military activity on Antarctica? How is that relevant? Silence, okay. How is that, how is that relevant, relevant to, to military what, existence? What type, what type of, of military dude. activity? What type of military activity? I mean, they still have bases down there. They are military run. Name one. So, McMurdo! What's up now? What's up Science. now? Is that what well, you said? Ironically, you're the one that just got silenced. I answered your uh, question. Uh, so it's a non sequitur that do people have tried to go and been intercepted? There okay. are scientists on Antarctica now. People have run 
for Guinness World Records in Antarctica have been recorded, have been filmed somehow. That's sometimes a uh, <laughs> not good mm-hmm. enough for flat earthers. Non sequitur. So, film, non sequitur, as in yeah. you can't go there. I know Except a guy who filmed Loch Ness that Monster there, too. That they filmed it. <laughs> Oh, really? We they said did? you can't privately you get that freely. guy to publish a paper so other people believe it, and he's not a conspiracy theorist. We said you can't privately and freely go there, so that's called a straw man fallacy. If you can just name someone that went on an approved guided tour, that's it's, a non sequitur straw okay. man fallacy. So it's not You'll a get straw there, man. though. You can go there. What you're trying to say is, I don't want to go there because then that would disprove the thing that really gets me in my feelings. No, if you attempt to get approved for circumnavigation across the center of the uh, Antarctic continent on the bottom of a ball, it will not be approved. They say it's too dangerous of a journey to even attempt, and they will not approve it because they don't say they think they can't rescue you. So you're just making stuff up. So they'll arrest you if you do it? Yes, people have been intercepted trying to go past the 60th South Latitude multiple times. There you go, ladies Um, and gentlemen. You can't go to Antarctica. You can't go there for any reason at all, whether you're a scientist or trying to transverse it. Doesn't matter that scientists are there right now, that we have Straw Man. Record records transversing it. Remember, you can't go there, except for Straw you Man fallacy again. It's a straw man, except for it's your exact position, which makes it a steel man. It's not in my exact position. We don't claim no one can go there. We claim that you have to be approved and you can only go where they let you go. Yeah, you you have then to go skate under past their it conditions. Yeah. It's can insane. I ask, have private citizens been there? Only when approved on where exactly they're going they go, to go, and, and they're not allowed to go anywhere except for where's approved. There you go, mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen. But they've you been can approved go to, to go there. <laughs> and only not a military where, base but it's the only government to go where they let you go and they do not approve circumnavigation all the way over antarctica they claim mm-hmm. it's too dangerous but you can yes. go into antarctica so i can go any that doesn't mean i'm proving the ursa ball and it's an ice cap on the bottom i'd have to go over it and come back up on the other side of the ball wouldn't i taylor and mcmurdo is not a military base by the way it's a research facility Okay. Are you going to just skate yeah, past? So you You're lied. just going to skate past the point? <laughs> no, I, was, yeah, I didn't well, lie. I was wrong. I'm going to go straight so to the what? lie. It doesn't matter. I already told you that I know a man who went to Antarctica, and it doesn't prove that the Earth is a ball either way. So I, I know mean, a guy. How long do you want to sit here and go, no, I know you can't. a guy. Yes, you can. I know a guy who went to the moon. He worked for NASA. He went to the moon. He worked for NASA. Just so we can hear one person at a time. He literally worked for NASA. Mm-hmm. I know a guy who went to the moon. This is non sequitur. So, a, a guy that worked for <laughs> NASA that do. was stationed in Antarctica says that you do not in any way are able to prove the Earth's a ball by being there, and that you don't see the 24 hour sun. He works for NASA and was stationed in Antarctica for NASA, and he's a flat earther. So it's and not just so, the same as saying, I know a guy. So he has published a paper on an flat hour Earth that gets peer reviewed. What was he <laughs> doing there? Can I ask? What was he doing research on? What's it? You got a name? He was actually doing, uh, oh, I can't remember. I did an interview with him a while ago, but it was something to do actually with satellites. Oh, oh, fantastic. And weather. It was we weather and satellite, satellite related. Soon. It was Start weather and satellite on, related. On that note, ever. Yeah. on that note, Amy, would you like to explain why you can't fake the footage from the Himawari weather satellite? Because you would have to be generating that in real time at all times. It's not real time. It's a 10 minute delay. Yeah. How fast can you Photoshop um, accurate weather patterns? Now you're asking us. So first it was real real time. First it was real real time. Now you guys have been exposed for claiming it's real time and you're objectively wrong. And now you're saying, oh, 10 minutes isn't fast enough when you have algorithms of computers and artificial intelligence. That good, can good, good assess every mm-hmm. cloud. So somehow this technology exists that can record every cloud's movement and then put it photorealistically into a uh, picture every 10 minutes. We use Did weather you check balloons. all those clouds that's of your, every picture? Now? Did you check uh, every cloud of every picture to make sure it was actually correct and true to weather patterns? And can you show me that? I didn't, but you should. And so, so the claim <laughs> is the science. You so could wait, debunk so it. Let's, well, you, well, the, you, the, 
The claim is the scientists are generating visual effects for you people. Once again, it's a massive conspiracy. They're generating mm-hmm. visual effects. You're just appealing to your emotion. You're Based just appealing on to nothing. emotion. Oh, I'm sorry. What was your model? <laughs> what was your model? You're just appealing you to emotion. You're oh, oh no. So, the floor is yours um, for your model. I'm ready. Uh, like right. Taylor you guys, said, your class is yours. You guys are freaking out, but this is great recruitment <laughs> for Flat Earth. So you guys claim that it was live time and it's objectively That's... not, right? So we oh, have great. weather patterns. No, we said all the there's a delay. With, what, with weather balloons, right? So we, we do keep a documentation of the weather very frequently and yeah you would just feed this information to an artificial intelligence algorithm that would give you a picture they're not even always accurate and you can actually go look and see that it is not a singular picture when you look at the actual extrapolation of the data now whenever can be asked you okay have you done this that doesn't mean anything you made the bold claim that you can prove it by looking at weather patterns and then she said have you done it and you said no, you should do it. But so you guys you just make that out loud. No, do it because because, because you're the one claiming that it's fake. So you show yeah. me any any instances of fakeness, but you just claim with no evidence that this tech, so this amazing fake. technology exists no, and well, that it is in fact being used to fake. You're with claiming it's real. No so the positive claim is that it's real, right? We're saying that's not okay. sufficient right. evidence or proof of anything because you could easily fake an image and then send it to people. That doesn't prove the earth's not easily. So that's a call to straw man fallacy failure. No, you would need, I'm glad you said that though, because you would need a technology that has not been shown to exist in order to do this and um i'm wondering what is your uh standard of evidence for a picture or video is it that you don't like this so you just claim it's cgi and but so like what picture or video would you accept do you just automatically reject all pictures on all video because it might claim that comes from the government claiming that they went to outer space and we can't personally verify and it's not legitimately testable we don't blindly give our entire worldview like mental midgets and say okay well we're gonna blindly believe this because the government made a claim so that's our actual stance. So but try you, again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I you do believe uh, video. You do believe video and picture when it's shown to you in other circumstances, though, don't you? If it's and independently I also verifiable. I want to point out that he said, ladies and gentlemen, remember the government is generating an algorithm. It is a massive conspiracy that they are trying to fool you that the Earth is round. Now he doesn't want to say the end of that sentence. He just wants to say the beginning, but. Ladies and gentlemen, they're lying to you. The governments are working together, creating wars. You're just making stuff up now. So, yeah, we know that governments <laughs> lie, right? Like they admittedly lie within the intrinsic description of what a government is. They automatically compartmentalize and keep things classified. That's what a government is. Admittedly, our government has started wars, ironically, like Gulf of Tonkin's declassified a false flag attack our government did themselves. So we're not claiming we know that not everything the government saying is a lie. We're not claiming millions of people are in on it. That's a straw man. What we're claiming is we don't blindly believe stories and propaganda that comes from the government when they are notoriously known to be dishonest and mislead us we need something that's independently verifiable right so i don't trust the government either i don't trust the government either at all so i'm with you there except we have this whole scientific community that isn't the government that's independently verifying what uh, nasa says Really? Can you give me some specific examples? It's illegal to privately go out there and do this. So what are these magical scientists you're talking about? Literally all physicists. Literally all physicists. All physicists. Now you're just Science, all physicists, physicists yeah. went to space? <laughs> Is that wow. it is a round earth in which we have went to the moon. Do you believe no, there actually, are places? I know tons of physicists that you, don't think the moon landing was real. You guys are just making stuff up. Well, I just I'm waiting to for them to the other day papers. who thinks the earth is flat. I just talked to yeah. an astrophysicist the other day who thinks there may be an ether and that relativity is wrong and the earth could be geocentric. I just talked to another physicist the other day who knows the earth is flat. So you guys are making <laughs> Once stuff again, up. Once again, how many people I talk you talk to, a guy to who at believes the end the of thing. the bar does not matter. You need them to publish papers. You're the one that appealed to the idea of physicists. Try to keep up, Amy. Yes, so you scientific guys want to move on. consensus, not guys at the bar. Do you understand the I difference talk- scientific consensus I and the let guy Karen at the, end B of the talk bar? to you. Oh my God! Why? So, why do you- so I talked to a guy who believes the thing is good enough evidence for you, 
No. But scientific consensus is not. That's another straw man fallacy. I didn't claim that it's because not. this physicist thinks the earth is flat, that means it proves it. What I said was you claimed all physicists prove and verify NASA's claims. Now, this is patently absurd and false on its face. For one, it's illegal to go to space. We're talking about these claims of them going to space and turning around and taking a picture of the Earth, okay? No physicists ever verified any of that. You made that up. And then when you appeal to all, because your guys are just appealing to emotion. You're appealing to the idea of science, right? It's the most fallacious idea ever. And I'm pointing out that actually not all physicists agree on really pretty much anything. So can My we get to the emotion, actual science. evidence maybe at some point? Or are we just going to keep appealing to emotion my favorite no, emotion, right. there, there might be there might be like one or two physicists um on the globe who believe that who you maybe don't know any, you, you're not some arbiter degree. of truth that knows what all physicists think man you sound ridiculous do most physicists agree with you what do you what do you uh, think I that percentage care. is i don't it doesn't what matter you it's you even claim to have talked to most 99 percent and it doesn't 99.9999%. So we don't appeal to authority. Yeah, appeal yeah, to authority so, and majority. If 99% of people think slavery is real, and, I mean, immoral, does that make it good? What a stupid argument. Bible, it's slavery, it's an good? appeal now to you're freaking expertise, out talking about your actually. infatuation with the Bible. So you guys are just all over the place, just imploding. Oh, with no, no, no. Can I actually ask you? Um, is the main reason why you are a flat earther scientific or religious? Uh, it's scientific, even though measurement's actually not a science question, but yeah, scientific uh, falsification of the globe earth claims. It has nothing to do with religion? No, literally nothing. Nothing, even though no. that you say a flat earther cannot be an atheist. Yeah, that doesn't mean <laughs> you don't understand it. So if No, the tie, is, those, that, tie that, to square that I, circle. I will. I will pull that pencil out and take notes or something. So if the earth is stationary... No. Okay, write it down. If the Earth is stationary, and that would mean it's geocentric. And if it's geocentric, it's the center of all things that are perceived, meaning there is no logical postulation that could explain that without it being placed there. I've got one simulation well, theory. Well, well, oh, who so created if you the programming me, of wait, the simulation? If you convince me. Who created the programming of the simulation? Yeah. If you convince me that the earth was flat, I wouldn't go to automatically to God. So well, not, why don't you teach me how this gravity thing works? Because that's why I'm convinced that the earth is a globe. Really? Because. Okay. What's gravity? Yeah. Yeah. What's gravity? But he also said it's a an half acceleration sentence. of mass towards mass. He said it was put there, but he didn't say creator. Like he does half sentences. Like it had to be put there by a. Uh, Oh, that's it has the nothing point. to do with so God. So the religion would come in when you personify or make specific claims about what the creator is or whatever, but the necessary antecedent to design is intelligent design. So it just means that it's placed there. Atheism would no longer be viable. You don't have there to personify go. it or come up with a religion. And that's not why people think the earth's flat. It's once you prove that the earth is flat and not what they said it is, and it's just an antecedent for a geocentric stationary earth. So... I don't want to just not let Karen B talk, though. I mean, Karen, Karen B would destroy you guys. You guys are just, she's a little too polite for you guys, I think. That's what <laughs> I think. So do you have anything to say about how our understanding of gravity is all wrong? Yeah. I'm here to learn. Yeah, yeah. Well, so go ahead, I Karen mean, B. well, first of all, you keep talking about mass attracting mass. So what about Einstein? Einstein is supposed to be the prevailing gravitational theory, and that has nothing to do with mass attracting mass. It's like bendy space time. So how do you... How do you um, reconcile that? The, the difference between uh, Einstein and Newtonian gravity? Un <laughs> under his theory, mass warps space time, which causes mass to accelerate towards mass. But it's not attraction, right? So, like, yeah. I said acceleration. <laughs> Well, at first you said you didn't actually. So, but either way, either way. So the question is, did you not know Wait, did that you relativity just has already been demonstrated to have tons of problems and it doesn't, it's actually provably right now at the best, in the best case scenario, incomplete within your own paradigm. You didn't know that. So you think that I said, uh, attract? No response. No response. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, not, doesn't matter. When you do, say Cavendish, you you're claiming mass attracts or accelerates. So you're when you say well, you said that the independent variable was mass, right? But so actually, the independent of variable, yeah. Actually, in the independent variable, according to uh, relativity, would be the bending and warping of space time. So the so it wouldn't be the mass itself. It would actually be the effect of the bending and warping of space time 
So that would be your independent variable. So when you set okay, it, okay, according yeah, to that model, mass. let's. This is just very dishonest because what warps space time? Well, in your paradigm, the displacement under that model, yeah, in your in that model, yeah, in your paradigm, the mass displaces the bending. Or, Thank the, you. Uh, right, but that's not the point. You claim let's the move on. variable, which is supposed to be the cause, but the cause is the bending and warping of space time. You need to manipulate space time and just reifying it by saying, "Oh, I changed the mass," doesn't actually verify that causal agent, which has been debunked in your own paradigm. How do you warp something that no, has no properties? Because mass, space has no properties. Yeah, space that. has property. How do you uh, what are the properties space of space? Property. So space What are the properties time, of space? So space and time are dimensions tied together wherever you dimensions have a is space, not a property. You have a time wherever you are in time you have a space so it is a single landmark that we call space then. Non sequitur. So she's asking how does space have physical properties? That's what she asked. Once again, dimensionality is a property of space. Ever since the, ever that's since a mathematical description. That's not a physical property. Try yeah, again. I don't consider that a property. It's a description of a physical property. No, it's not. Try it's again. a description of an amount of area, a volume. It's a different cor Cartesian coordinate system of area or volume that isn't a physical property. It is. No. It is a property. It is a thing. It's not a thing. That they is claim a it's property. Nothing. They claim it's nothing. <laughs> So it was emptiness. Space. So space does not have dimensions. Dimensions is just an arbitrary description mathematically to describe a certain of, Cartesian coordinate system something. applied to something. But your religion, or I mean heliocentrism, claims that space is emptiness or nothingness. It's a description of something priest. that has that space time has, right? Uh, no, you can just mathematically describe it with the Cartesian coordinate system. Space is considered nothingness or emptiness. It's not considered nothingness. So it's considered emptiness. Space, yeah. Space, space, empty, empty of matter. Right. So space has dimensions. Well, well could describe okay. Therefore, dimensions. it is a property of space. That's no. how English works. Sorry yeah. to burst your bubble. You don't understand dimensions aren't physical properties. You have to have something physical in which you're applying the dimensions to. So you'll get there. Dimensions are physics, and it is physical. Yeah, dimensions it's are not, physics. Dimensions are not mass, but dimensions is math. physics. The math. Dimensions are math. I also want to know both. Which of is you physics? Said that math isn't you... physics. No, it's not. And and I, I I wasn't commenting on your math comment. I'm saying it's not mass. So what? That's probably what you're thinking of as physical. It's not mass. It's not mass or it is. But there are non-mass things in physics that are physical. Okay, can you define physical? Anything that has to do with physics. Anything that, okay. So the definition of physical in your own paradigm is energy or mass. So and space. Is which one? I said and space. No, 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 no. Energy and mass. So which one is it that space falls under the category of energy or mass? Neither. Okay. So it's not physical, even within your own paradigms definition. So we can move on. All right. So. Nope. Physical universe is anything that we are able to interact with. That's why we don't seem to get any experiments from the flat earth side. In fact, both of them said that they went out, they did the experiments themselves. However, as far as I can tell, neither of them published papers. And so there is oh. nothing to be added to the scientific community. And I, if long as they put, you know, how they got their results, their methodology, other people can then do the same thing. And, yeah, you're just... Oh, no, continue. Actually, well, no, I to consensus. Oh. Aaron B, sorry, go ahead. There is a paper published, actually, uh, a very long paper. It's over 100 pages long PDF that is that has been published by um, the group of people that I did the measurements with. I didn't call them experiments. They were actually direct measurements of the Earth's surface to try to measure the Earth for curvature because they do give us a given size of the Earth, which is a which is. The radius of 3959, which you could then from that you can, you know, go do basic geometry and extrapolate the numbers. And then you should know how much curvature you should see from one point to another. And every time we did measurements, we did not measure 
any curvature at all. And what journal was this published in, if I ask? It wasn't was it published in a journal because you're not going to publish a in a in a scientific uh, mainstream scientific journal something that debunks everything that they try to push. Yeah, right. so you're yeah, we did a publish conspiracy. it ourselves, but we did so, publish it ourselves, and it is available for public viewing, and I can and give it to you right now. Engineers, yeah, it's done <laughs> by a group of engineers, and it's in-depth documentation of all the tools, all the methodologies, all the data, all the refractive conditions. Seven refractive different index. measurements. Yes, yeah. seven apparently different measurements. The rest of the, apparently, <laughs> the rest of the scientists don't think it was good methodology. Oh, have you, can you name one of them? I haven't seen it. You, you can also find this published you need at www.thisisdefinitelyscience.blogspot.com. So all you guys are doing is just like, because um, you guys have no substantive value to your argument, so you're just appealing to consensus. You're like, oh, well, no, uh, the mainstream didn't peer review it and say it was true, so therefore it's not. But ironically, what you just claimed is true, right, which is relativity, I can cite since you like to appeal to consensus so much and whatever a scientist says is true – which is stupid because they all disagree. I can tell you at least 500 different people that say the theory of relativity is not viable, must be replaced, and is in no way complete or compatible, for example, with quantum or the cosmological scale. And you just said you know you proved it with Cavendish. So you, you have a contradictory worldview. You're just trying to gaslight us. That's all you're doing. You're gaslighting us for the audience to pretend that somehow since you have the majority of people on your side, that that means you're right. So how am I supposed to tell the difference between you actually being right and all of us being wrong um, and all the experts being wrong and you just teaming up with some people and saying, I know a guy who said it wasn't round. How am I supposed to tell the difference? Do you know what straw man fallacies are? Because it's like the most dishonest fallacy that one can use in a debate where no one made any of those claims that you're saying. We didn't say that some guy told us and therefore one guy told us so the earth is flat. No, we said you can go out and physically prove via empirical replicatable demonstrations and measurements and experiments that falsify the claim of the globe earth model that's what we're actually saying so so everything you're saying is a non sequitur bro it, you're just making up straw man fallacies it's lame no how am how am i supposed to know the difference because i know of several ways to measure the curvature name one and you just call them cgi name one pictures looking at lakes that curve with your eyes pictures lakes measure the curve. earth Looking at the stars, which can't spin in opposite directions unless you're on literally anything but a flat surface. None of those things That's measure not... the Earth. They do. Hey, can I share the screen? No, so they I can don't. Go ahead All you can them? do with the lights in the sky is observe them. That you can't use them as a form of measurement because there's no frame of reference. You can observe that, and those aren't spinning in different directions. You're just slightly warping it. Okay, um, so that would give you the optical illusion of things moving in different directions based on the uh, containment, actually. So what's up? What's your answer? No, it doesn't. Why not? Because that's not an optical illusion of things spinning in opposite directions. We're literally looking at it, though. And that's we're an not. interesting thing. It says glass we literally dome. Are. That uh, makes it almost seem like this dome is made of glass. Wouldn't that be interesting if you just go up to the dome and try and crack it, get right through it? Why are you changing and the subject, buddy? And this is on top of the dome, <laughs> my lady, right up there. You're changing the subject. So, T- Taylor, you just said, no, you have any substantive specificity of any value or? Because mm, it's not spinning in opposite directions. Maybe they it's the frame are. rate for me, but it's not. Um, and this is observed. This is not observed. Uh, and observed? this is and this is taken from above the dome. Okay. So this is not a model. You would be perceiving the stars through the dome. More cartoon. Under it. Hey, there's, a, under there's, it. Also, a, there's a, there also a magnetic field. Look different two under. parallel things of stars themselves, actually. Two sets of stars within a magnetic field that can be depicted. You would get the exact same thing. Also magnetic uh, holography. Also magnetic Your speculation. Yeah. I, just, I, I love you're speculation saying it's, you're saying as, it's, no, as scientific you evidence. You said it was impossible. I'm showing you mm-hmm. that's not true. There are many possibilities. As I then lay out the possibilities, 
which refute your claim that it's impossible, you now say it's speculation because we can't physically go to these locations and verify things. So that's a non sequitur. Your claim that it's impossible has been disproven. You're not showing me stars under a dome. You're not showing me anything like that. Does this show that a container, that, that some type of physical container can alter the stars and make them look like they're going in opposite directions? Yes or no? Not like the earth, and it doesn't look like it to me. Okay, well, so, well, we'll let the audience decide. If you just say, no, uh doesn't mean anything. Everyone can see them going in two different directions. It, it, no, it looks like it's just going in one direction to me. Okay, well, I'm sorry that you, you it's can't It's a pretty see bad things. frame rate. Can I ask, do you guys believe in the atmosphere? Uh, yeah, we believe in the atmos. What so, is holding the atmosphere down if not for gravity? There's a physical containment. We don't see gravity hold gas down. It goes in all directions. A physical containment? Once again, like a glass dome? So We don't have to claim glass or anything. Yep, something containing it. We could pick something out of that key. You guys got nothing. So if gravity's holding so the one gas more... down, why does it go in all directions? <laughs> why does it have density gradient? What do you mean, why, why does it go in all directions? Because it's fluid. Why does it have a uh, okay. density gradient? <laughs> Why is it? Why is there a gradient? That's your question. We have an electric gradient on the Earth, and we have the most gas being introduced at the surface level. And the only way that you can have a pressure gradient is to have the pressure in the first place, which requires a containment. So that was easy. It does hey. not require a containment. It only requires acceleration. Acceleration. No. What? What does mm -hmm. acceleration have to do with a pressure gradient? Because if something, if the air is accelerating toward the ground, then it's going to accumulate toward the ground. It's not, though. It goes in all directions, including directly up away from the ground. Mm-hmm. So, so if something's going up yeah, away from the, the pressure, ground, is it accelerating towards the ground? Most of it is accelerating towards the ground. That's a non sequitur. The point is that the gas goes in all directions. It's actually a direct answer to what you said. No, you said that it's all going down. Yeah, most of it is going down. Is it most? And some of all? it might move a little bit. So what? That's how fluids work. So even it's your like model water. claims it has to be contained, Taylor. You don't know that. It's it doesn't need a solid container. It needs gravity. Physical can, gravity, mm -hmm. gravity, which is physical, um, but not solid, will contain air and water. But it doesn't at the surface where it's the strongest. It goes in all directions. It does. It goes in all directions. So? And it's also, there's an electric gradient on the Earth. So we can prove that there's an electrostatic field and electric gradient on the Earth, which electrostatics on the smallest scale is 10 to the 39th power stronger than gravity even claims to be. And we can actually prove that's there. So can you actually prove that this magical bending and warping of space-time is there without just begging the question and saying, look, I moved mass around? Can you prove it? It doesn't matter. We observe the phenomena that all matter accelerates towards matter. It doesn't matter how it happens. Uh, really, we don't so have to all, know. All yeah, matter accelerates so, towards other matter, including air. And you can demonstrate this. You can fill up any container with air and weigh it against something else. It's going to be heavier when it has air in it. Okay, because air pressure. is mass. It creates pressure. <laughs> pressure is not weight. Well, really, what? Well, what's pressure over area of a weight of a scale? What is that? What's pr pressure over a certain area of a scale? It's not weight. It literally is. If you have a certain no, amount of downward not. pressure over a certain area, that's called weight. Yeah. What did you just say? Downward pressure? What causes yeah. that direction downward? Okay. Why not so, sideways? So you admitted you can't prove your claim, so I'll, I'll help you out. So there's an electric gradient. Everything's intrinsically electrostatic, right? So all molecular and intermolecular. You can't prove that. All molecular and intermolecular attractive forces are electrostatic in nature. There's not one piece of matter in all existence that isn't electrostatic. That's a citation from Purdue University. What do you mean I can't prove it? Literally everything that exists. Because So if I drop this, it's going to fall at a certain speed. If I put it next to something, it's not going to fall towards that because it's not attracted electrostatically. Okay, that's right. What that's a non sequitur. If you were to turn, if no, you were it to proves give, you wrong. No, it doesn't. If you were, to, yes, it does. Wait, are you saying the marker isn't electrostatic? <laughs> not enough to move it. Oh, not enough to move it. So it had to be stronger, but it's still there. Thank you for playing. So if we increase the electrostatics to the other marker, we could draw it in, and we can prove electrostatics does this because we can use a Van de Graaff generator and make things float, manipulating electrostatics. Can you give me an anti-gravity machine? Can you show me where you manipulate the bending and warping of space-times and make things float? 
If you can make something float and turn off its gravity, it will just keep going. And then answer the question. It, it, it reaches a certain point where you it reaches a certain point where you push it away and then it falls back down. Can you answer the question? So we so in science we have an independent variable, right? So we have a naturally occurring observable phenomena that things go down, downward acceleration. Now not all things go down, things go up also. The question is why does it just go up and down and not side to side? Well, we have an intrinsic bias, an electric gradient going up 100 volts per meter on the earth, right? So we have a positive above negative surface charge on the surface and everything's electrostatic. We see it happen with electrostatic levitation with bumblebees and with uh, spider ballooning and with beetles. They use their electrostatic nature to levitate. Right. So then we're going to test our hypothesis. Does electrostatics have something to do with why things go down? So what we're going to do is manipulate the electrostatics to see if it's the cause of the effect. And when we do that, we can make things float. So we've proven that electrostatics is at play and does affect the direction that things go. Now you're claiming there's something else there called the bending and warping of space time. Can you manipulate the bending and warping of space time, please, and prove that it's a cause? Or is it just me that has all the scientific evidence and you just have a religion? You have zero scientific evidence. Uh, um, so the, uh, uh, also before you go on, Taylor, I just want to point out he used religion in a negative way. Austin, I agree. We should continue saying religion is bad. People should not mm -hmm. believe in religions. And now right back over to you, Taylor. I don't like religion. Mm -hmm. There we go. We yeah, agree. Man -made and doctor nobody's here upon. arguing in favor of religion. Yeah. So you yeah. keep conspiracy you, theory, though. You pretended <sighs> like electro. <laughs> Static forces can uh, debunk gravity, and yet there's still a force of gravity uh, pulling it down. So, yeah, you can what? use a magnet to make something float, but it only floats so far. You're accelerating something in this direction. Oh, here we go with the whiteboard. <laughs> yeah, that's all I got, unfortunately. You can't even respond to the point, though. There's something moving it in that direction, though. We just explained it. Yeah, there's electrostatic acceleration. All objects that go down are electrostatic. Whether you drop rubber or glass or wood, you name it, it's all mm -hmm. electrostatic. The surface of the earth is electrostatic. The air is electrostatic. We can replicate this with a Van der Graaff generator and make things float. You lose. And right. you can't make it. You can't replicate the the effects of gravity. But what you can. What are you talking about? But you can with mass. Matt, so I can that, use I can use things of differing electrostatic strength and get the same effect of gravity using the Cavendish experiment. Cavendish uh, uses mass that's electrostatic, but it doesn't even matter because what, even what? if I granted you all this electrostatic woo woo, it would still mean that you can hold an atmosphere to the surface of a round planet. It would still make a round thing. Nothing could stay flat if. If there is an if it is indeed electrostatic, it doesn't matter. It's an attractive force of some kind. Even if there's a big pressure effect. differential, what about the pressure differential between "quote unquote" space and Earth? If there's some electrostatic attraction, mm -hmm. if there's electrostatic attraction of air to the Earth, then yeah, it can hold it to the Earth. Do you Same know with water? Do you know what space is supposedly supposed to be? As far as what, is, what are you looking for? Like, do you know that they say that space is 10 to the negative 17 torr? Do you know that they say that it's like 76 quintillion times less atmosphere than on Earth? Like nothing? So and that's like did huge, you know? That's a huge that's, space, space, right? To be filled mm -hmm. up without a right. container stopping that. Right, vacuum, and what's stopping that is something is pulling the air down. Yeah, yeah, that's what you're claiming. But ga uh, gas goes in all directions, and the only you thing claimed we have it too. Well, well, no, what I'm doing is acknowledging mm -hmm. what's provable with science, so we can prove that we have electricity on the Earth. We can prove there's an electric gradient on the Earth. We can prove that you can get a downward current on the Earth using a uh, electrostatic generator. We, it's called a corona motor. We can prove that things can float with the manipulation of electrostatics. So we've proven everything that I'm talking about. We can prove that all matter that exists is electrostatic. This is all provable. Now, you're claiming something else that's not provable. But you want to try to critique my claim with all these different questions, but you won't even provide any evidence for your claim at all. So can you please prove your bending and warping of space-time?
Well, I also want to ask, yeah. because you brought up a question from a while. I We were talking about the dome that you didn't want to talk about. It seems to be that it has like a integrity that just doesn't break. And so I wondered why it seems to be lasting all these years. You would think it would need maintenance. You would think that it would need repairs. You would think that it would need something then a law of nature that is making and maintaining we have we're alive so our cells maintain why is it that this dome just seems to be there and forever it's just that's a complete non sequitur trying to shift away from the actual conversation taylor you're getting exposed here man can you tell me how you prove the bending and warping of space no time, answer please? gotcha yeah, yeah, you're asking me something that's unverifiable and it's a non sequitur. So you you're, you're an answer, but we can no, you're just speculating about you what you have an think. answer. Yeah, no. you just assert there's a dome for no reason. Yeah, what is maintaining the dome? Not for no is, reason. It's because is, it has to do with the second law. Of is it finite? Gas pressure yeah. and all that. Will good the stuff. dome go away? I'm sorry, no. Karen. You were talking. Yeah, she just smoked you. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah so gas. I mean, whatever. The way gas second law thermodynamics. Does not hold on. And it yeah, gas dome? pressure. Well, gas pressure does not work. Containment, yeah. So vacuums don't suck. The way gas pressure works is it has to push into the no vacuum. No one said vacuums suck. Yeah, I didn't say that. You just I have didn't say you did. And you have a script. I Can didn't say. Did I say whole... that you did? Yeah, did I say you, you said, did? Then why are you pretending you're teaching us about how they don't suck? Because I'm making a point about why something would go up or down. It would fill the available space so, regardless of what direction. No, it doesn't. Because yeah, guess what? You asserted this downward acceleration. I don't care what causes it. We can call it electrostatics. We can call it gravity. But no, there's a downward acceleration. We can't call and it you gravity, admit it. though, because therefore, the is, Therefore, I'm mid-thought. I'm mid okay, go, ahead. go ahead. Therefore, so you have empty space up here. There's stuff being accelerated downward. What's going to cause it to expand upward? Nothing, because it's going yeah. accelerating downward due to the no. force that you admitted. When gas is going straight up, <laughs> believe it or not, it's not accelerating downward. Okay, the reason you can't say it can be electrostatic or it can be gravity is because electrostatics is way too weak to do what you need it to do. Now we can prove electrostatics is there. But they had to make a new claim because it's too weak to claim that you can bend the convexity of the oceans around a ball and all this other nonsense. So you had to make up a new story called gravity, which has constantly been changing, has been debunked on the cosmological scale, on the quantum scale. And everyone knows relativity is wrong. It's incomplete at the best. You have dark matter, dark energy, and it doesn't work on the quantum scale. It doesn't work on the quantum scale at all. You guys run around on the Internet and pretend you know it's a definitive fact when everyone that is in the very group that you're appealing to, these scientists that I speak with, say, there's no doubt relativity is wrong and 100% is not actually what gravity is. If it does exist at all, they haven't been able to discover the graviton and I could go on forever about what's wrong with relativity. You're claiming it though. I demonstrated to the audience and to everyone else, I can prove electrostatics. You're claiming something additional to that. And every time I ask you for evidence that we can prove that you manipulated the bending and warping of space time, or can you prove that relativity is true? You change the subject because the answer is no, you can't prove it. And every single physicist that you ever talked to that knows knows anything about this conversation would know that you can't prove it because it hasn't been proven. Yeah. Your so favorite strong man. paper going against relativity. You seem to be scientists are saying the guys at the scientists at the end of the bar I were at were saying it. Do you know if any of the scientists that you were talking at the end of the bar published any papers? Yeah, literally all of quantum mechanics all knows that. Yeah, literally, literally. So you seem to be <laughs> ignorant of the subject. So you, so you trust those scientists for some reason. Well, that's um, experimentally valid. Like we can actually test that. We're physically mm -hmm. manipulating things and testing it. Right. But whenever mm -hmm. you talk about your fairy tales of space, that's a totally different ball game. And even in your fairy tale of space, relativity doesn't work there either. And it's known for a long time. So, uh, it is experimentally validated that if you have a larger mass, you get a faster acceleration toward it. I don't care whether it's the bending of space time or electrostatics. I don't care at all. Because you should what care, we though. can show, not for this topic. Yeah, for this topic. <laughs> no, hey, not I for put, this topic. Because it only matters. Moon, am I it only matters. <laughs> yeah, it only matters. <laughs> yeah, it's irrelevant, but it only matters what the direction is. 
No, you don't understand. It matters about the strength as well, Taylor. So the strength needed yeah. to keep, well, listen carefully. It's not, I don't care if it's electrostatics or gravity. You can't say that because for the earth to be a ball, it has to be gravity. It can't be electrostatics because electrostatics is too weak. It wouldn't hold the gas down next to a pressure system of 10 to the negative 17 torr. And neither would gravity, by the way. And it wouldn't explain the convexity of the oceans. It wouldn't make these planets revolve around each other. Electrostatics doesn't work. You need what's called gravity. So when you say, I don't care which one it is, you're showing your ignorance of the subject. You don't fully understand it, which is normally why people are globers. And then after um, Taylor, except, I want to make a question. Except that air actually falls and you claim it's due to electrostatics. I don't care what it's due to. I only care what direction it moves. I said and gas doesn't it always moves fall. down. Gas doesn't always fall. So? It goes in all directions. It, it does always fall. Does helium fall? If I fill the balloon with helium, is it going to fall? Yeah, depending on which environment you're in. If you fill up a tank, a, a solid tank of helium, it will be heavier with the helium in it. How'd you measure that? Oh, it'll be because oh, how'd you, you get the helium in that tank? How does it how stay do in there? It? How do you know? I'm it's not at the familiar at the with top. helium technology. You know but if what you say top. is true, if what you say is true that this electrostatic gravity cannot hold air to the ground, then we should have higher air pressure up the top toward the um, the dome that you can't prove, that you just speculate about. No. But we actually see the opposite because mass always gets attracted downwards. And yes, mass can push mass in all kinds of directions because I can move my arms and push air up. <laughs> and but it's I, always going to come back down. It pulls it down and pushes it up at the same time. Can I also add yes, yeah, it's it's take it in space time? What's it? Don't you have get you it? Ever? The bendy space time. No, we can all bend in space have... time in every direction at every moment on all over at the same time. It's fine. It all I works know, fine. I know it's hard to believe, but you can have <laughs> opposing directions of acceleration. No, I know that. Wow. I know that. I, Taylor, see, all you can do is try to straw man and pretend you're smarter than we are. Because it's yeah, called hey, Taylor. Taylor, it's called sophistry. So what just happened was you said you know that you can <laughs> have opposing rich. accelerative directions, right? But actually, what I was pointing out that what you said was stupid was because you said that it was the gravity that was pushing it away. That mass can push <laughs> it away while pulling it. You're ignorant. That's not what happens. So that's what you I said. Didn't you, say may that. Have, you may have misspoke. I know that you said it. The whole audience heard you say it. You 100. I didn't said say it. that. Yes, you did. You said the mass pushes not. it away. You said the mass can push it away. You mm -hmm. said it. I did in all not, directions. You literally I did not say can gravity push can push. You said the mass pushes said. it away. Can I also That's called ask a normal guys, force. That's what? that's what a normal force is. So Sorry, Amy, go ahead. Oh, no. You said it love. We have the moon, the other celestial bodies, like our star, all of the other planets. Do they have domes? What is making them round? Okay. Gary, you want you want you got it, man. You okay, it. they all the things in the sky are just lights in the sky. Nobody's gone there. Nobody's physically touched them. Nobody's physically measured them. They are just lights in the sky. How do you know that? That's it. How do I know that? Because I can see that they're lights in the sky. There Nobody's you go. physically measured them. Do you know how, but the, you're how they measured the distance to the sun? Did they you're get a, like what a they physical are. tape measure? No, I didn't. I just said they're. You, do you deny that they're said, lights in the sky? You said you they're deny? just lights in the sky. Do you deny that there are lights in the sky? So are you claiming Are there no that... lights in the sky? There's no luminaries. Are you there's saying no, they're not stars? There's no luminaries in the sky. Is this what are you're you saying? saying? They're not stars. When you say you just said there no, were lights in the stars. sky. I just said they're luminaries in the sky. I'm not I'm not assuming anything about what they are other than that because I haven't physically touched them. I haven't been there. Nobody I know has been there. It's not independently falsifiable. Uh, we, can't we have pictures it. of planets that are round. You have, you have CGI. CGI. We, we can see no, 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 the no, no, other no, no, side no, no. of them. Ladies and we can gentlemen, see the other remember, side. these are two people with literally no expertise in CGI, film, or anything uh, Excuse about me, Little Miss, I have a degree in graphic design. I also have a degree in graphic design and multimedia, and I've been using Photoshop since oh, the first iteration before oh, there were even ladies layers. Ladies and gentlemen, before I'm Before there so were even sorry. layers. She has seen a pixel and quite a few shoops in her time, and so she You're knows like the worst that the comedian earth ever, by the I way. I know, this is insane. <laughs> not funny. I, you're allowed to call me the worst comedian because comedy is a subjective thing and we're well, you're funny but not in the that. way that you're going to you know I get what I'm it. saying but ladies and gentlemen 
They do not have <laughs> anything but cartoons and CGI that they create. Meanwhile, we have actual photos and videos. I have measurements. I put a link in the chat here to the measurement, the P and measurement PDF, if you want to read it. Be my guest. I also yeah, and there are measurements out, of the curve. To, so oh, oh, there are. No, there it's no, it's a measurements of a lack. Yeah, there, there are. Okay, what are the measurements of curve, Taylor? So you if you have measurements of curve and you have measurements of no curve, what does that mean? It's what a are curve. the measurements of curve, Taylor? I've already been over this. Name one. Uh, I'm responding to Karen uh, <laughs> because you cut in. You cut in while I was responding to her. Oh, you can't so, answer. And I've already answered your question, so I'm not oh, going to waste any more answer. time on that. You can't answer. I did. I did. So we expect that there would be flat parts on a giant globe. We do? And then, yeah, because it's so large that the curve is so gradual that some parts are going to appear flat. This it's is a disco flat. ball. And it's a uh, golf ball. Okay. So I don't I don't measure curvature on this, but no, that's uh, not if I ball. increase the distance, I'm gonna start <laughs> measuring curvature. <laughs> it's not a ball. I hope and, you I mean, whatever. Oh, well, it's, we're on a ball though. That's I what, those are flat things I, on a ball. No, we're not on a ball. I didn't measure mm -hmm. curvature at all whatsoever, anytime I ever tried. There's multiple, there's literally dozens of, of measurements that show that there's no curvature. So why would there's we show lack of curvature long distance? The long distance photo, Mount Canigou in France, it debunks the globe. It, yeah, you mean, no, it's because literally impossible. Are you going to tell me that refraction? Oh, okay. Refraction. Refraction does not bend light around the earth curve. Okay. Like the curve of a yes, ball. Yes, it does. Like, no, Three it miles in the air, Taylor. Like this is the thing. You don't We're even talking about know the hundreds specifics of miles. at all. You're just making it. You don't know the specifics of the conditions. You don't know the specifics of anything. You're just saying the word, you know, you have to say in response to every observation. And, and, and the truth is, we know way more. I guarantee you, I know way more about your claim about refraction than you will ever know. I know all about it. You just say the word. And the truth is, just so the audience knows what we're talking about, we saw mountains from 200, over 250 miles away. And the globe Earth says they should be blocked by three miles of Earth curvature. And yet we saw the miles. I mean, we saw all miles of the missing curvature, the, all the mountains. We saw the shoreline mm. of the mountains. And they just say, oh, well, it looks exactly like the mountains. But it's just an illusion. And actually, the mountains aren't there. They got optically lifted up three miles in the air. So cool but, story. You can just I, say a word. Before yeah, you, refraction is a confirmed phenomenon. Does it mean it's doing what you're claiming it's doing? Yeah, exactly. But I also it, want to go back to this graphic design equals I have experience in CGI thing. Because I have you ever rigged a model? Have you ever? About in 3D? Yes. Have you yes. ever rendered? You yes. have rendered, and yet yes. you're going to sit here and say that the footage that we have is being rendered right now and has been rendered since the 60s. What do you oh, mean so rendered since the 60s? Straw man. We went to the moon. We've known we've had video footage of celestial bodies, the earth being round, the moon being round. You don't think they could have used models back then? I didn't say it was all CGI. It could have been not, models back then. They could yeah. not have used those types of pro those sorts of programs did not exist. Oh, back she just then. said no, a just model. Said they didn't have to use a program. Back then they could have physically built a model. In fact, you can see photos of them literally building scale models of the moon. I mean, it's and the Not earth. a secret. Yep. And the earth. Yes. So your argument is just ridiculous. Once again, it is a conspiracy that <laughs> they went and they built tiny little models and they just happened. I don't know how tiny they were. Yeah. They were pretty I'm, big, actually. Know. The ones that so, they showed so they were pretty big. So there's just CGI or models up in the dome uh, showing us the different sides of the planet. It's nothing but straw man. No, 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 it, no, no. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, okay, so they're planets. All you can do is straw man us. What do you think the audience thinks when everything you say I'm is straw so manning you're you? saying and it's a lie every time? What do you think they think? That's not what I said at all. You said so there are models in the firmament dome. No one said anything right, like that's, that. I didn't that's say that's a ridiculous example that I know you don't agree with because the observable uh, phenomenon is not. <laughs> 
is that we can see the different sides of a planet in the sky. And to believe that, you would have to believe that there's CGI or models in the sky. And I know you don't believe no. that. So where does that leave us? Why do you what think is your that we have to believe? Why is it one or the other? Why do, you, why do we have to assume that we know what the planets are? It's what is your explanation? There's a pulsating orb of light that has a cyclical nature within a fluid-like medium and its own luminescence based on the auditory reverberation. What's up now? Oh, it's just speculation. Yeah, no, it's just like yeah. you speculate about the sky. So, thank you. You yeah. just speculate it. it, and it's not a. That's light. what you do. Like That's why I say it's not even. We don't even bring that up. Like we don't even. I don't even go there because it doesn't prove anything anyway. I'd rather talk about the Earth, where we can actually physically stand and measure right here. That we could touch it. We can physically touch and measure the actual ground that we stand on, and there is no measurable curvature. And the we sand can, and we mountains make observations observable. that are beyond the geometric curve. Yep. The sand, oh. mountains, craters, uh, riverbeds on Mars, that's just a pulsating light, says that's Austin. What we, I that's guess, what we see. I guess I'm converting now. I don't care about I wouldn't even want you over here. So, like, I'm not <laughs> trying to convert you. You know, like I'm saying, we we don't believe in fairy tales from the government. You say you believe the government lies all the time and you don't fairy trust tales. them. But NASA, everything they say is true i'm like okay you're getting kind of weird but whatever you want to believe over there my guy we don't believe in stuff like that we went and tested the surface of the earth the geometric horizon is nowhere to be found and now we've discovered that the globe earth argument which my friend mr anderson said this is why they don't want the debates on mainstream television this is why all right because it would just be so bad it would be immediately everyone knew so we're asking for physical empirical evidence that can be replicated to prove the geometric curve of the earth and that it is where it's supposed to be and all the globe earthers say is refraction meaning we never see the curve of the earth from the ground we never see the actual position of the curve of the earth so is that what you think you think we never see the actual geometric horizon we see it from satellites you just claim it's cgi with no evidence see it from the earth though. um yeah, you can see it from the Earth, but it might be a little bit bigger because of refraction, which does happen. So then we so, don't ever see the actual position of Earth just, curve. Uh, what? And might I say, no consensus <laughs> in any expertise field, no expertise in the visual effects field or in any physical field within you, the... You are a textbook sophist. Okay, uh, continuing. No physicist that is writing papers, and when we ask them to present papers, they say, well, they won't accept our papers. Okay, so Taylor, what I asked you was, are you saying that we can never see the phys the Whoa, actual boy. Earth curve? Like, we can never see the actual mm. position of the real Earth curve on the ground? That doesn't mean anything. I'm asking you, is that what you're saying? I can't answer that because that doesn't mean anything. Do we see the actual position of the Earth curvature on the ground ever? Like the horizon? The actual curvature the of the Earth. The position of the Earth curvature, that doesn't mean anything. The actual position as opposed to an apparent position or location, it literally does mean something. So what are you Curvature about? isn't a position. It's not a point. Okay, there's a geometric location relative to the observer's height. Yes, it is. You have a tangent point. So I'm sorry you don't understand things, but you, you literally do have a tangent point. It's called a that's geometric not a curve. Location. It's you called don't a geometric understand curve. mathematics. It's called a geometric horizon. So yes. you that's that's the curve of the earth. You would see a bulge or what you call a geometric horizon. Your your claim your claim is that we never see the actual geometric horizon or curve of the earth, that we always see no. an apparent horizon from the ground. You can see the horizon from the ground. What is your point? Is the horizon we see the actual curve of the Earth, or is it an apparent refracted horizon? It's the actual curve. But, so you just now said that when we saw the mountains, the reason that we didn't see the curve was because it was refracted. Or what about when the horizon moves back and forth? It can't be the actual curve because it's moving back and forth. I mean, the Earth's not breathing in and out. So It is the actual curve. So moving, why is it going it back appear, and forth? It can appear distorted. Is that what you're asking about? So Why does answer, it appear distorted? Well, no, it's just we never see the actual position or location of the Earth curve. Like it moves around optically based on the atmos. It's because of refraction. That's what your position says. Your position says that we never see the actual geometric horizon because we always have refraction within the atmosphere. So it constantly moves it around. The horizon we see is an apparent location, right? And that the actual location is never seen. But the question then is, and that is your position. I'm not strongmaning. I still manned it to help you out. So the question is, and how do we know it's there? 
If we've never seen the actual position of the earth curvature, we can never see the actual earth curve. How do we know it's there? Because it can't curve on a flat surface. The, the light cannot refract like that on a flat surface. When you say, so, yeah, you the, say curve, that? the curve looks a little bit bigger sometimes. Can't do that on a flat surface, though. You're saying there'd be no horizon on a flat Earth? So Well, it would be above it. The horizon is always, what are you talking about? The horizon rises optically up and down above above you. What are you talking about? I, I explained this in the opening. Um, so, like, flat geometric so straight perspective you see will farther. converge at a certain point uh, on a horizon. When you actually compare that with actual photos of, you know, for example, like Pontchartrain, you can try and line that up with geometric um, perspective. And the horizon is always lower because it's curving down because on a flat plane, it would just keep going. Now on a flat plane, actually the horizon would also be below you because you're going up above the earth. So it would rise towards eye level, but it'd still be below. It's an apparent location that fluctuates based on optics like atmospheric or at most location or conditions. So you would have a horizon on a flat earth, right? You have a vanishing point. You can't see forever and it constantly changes. And on a flat earth, that's what would happen. The globe earth claims the earth physically blocks our view, yet it constantly moves around and is never where it's supposed to be. And we see way too far. So uh, and I'm not sure what you're trying to say. If you're claiming that there'd be no horizon on a flat earth, I mean, yikes. What I'm talking about is I don't, if you've been taught to draw in school, right? You draw a building. From a perspective. Right. You draw, you draw flat the line, lines, converges with the horizon. All straight lines. Right. That's what you'd expect on a flat earth. On a globe earth, they curve and end, it ends before the actual geometric horizon on a flat earth. That's observed reality. Observed reality is what? That the horizon constantly moves back and forth and it's sometimes below our eyes because we rise above the surface of the optical convergence or vanishing point. That doesn't prove that the earth is curving. I just addressed all of that. Well, you can't that get that effect that on we a have flat a dynamic, earth. That just proves that we have a dynamic at, at most that changes from day to day. Your visibility changes. doesn't have anything to do with earth curvature. Yeah. It, it oh. does, though. You're just because saying structures it. Structures are built over it. What? Structures are built over curves. Like structures the are built Lake over Lake train. Lake Pontchartrain. Talking about the is, bridge. Is mm -hmm. built over Which curves. Curve. Okay, but, but do you not think that you can build a curved bridge? It doesn't curve with the earth. The design of the bridge is curved way different than the rate of curvature of the earth, bro. You don't think that they make the bridge go up so maybe boats can go under it at some point and then it can go back down to the land? like. Yeah, and it just increases stru structural integrity. My well, goodness. Uh, it doesn't go straight into the ground, and yet that's what it looks like if you're on one side of it, which is only possible if it's curved. No, it constantly fluctuates how far you can see. That's the horizon is just an apparent location. It's an optical illusion. Like the, the ground doesn't literally merge with the sky. That's ridiculous, right? So it's an optical illusion. It moves back yes. and forth based on the atmosphere. The globe earth claims that there's an actual curve blocking us and that it moves back and forth. But trust me, somewhere within there, it's a real curve. That's just objectively what it is. So the question is, why do we never see the real curve? The answer is because there's always an atmosphere. Fair enough. To be fair, it's like, okay, fair enough. Then how do we know it's there then? That's the question. On a flat surface, in order to get refraction, you would need air density like this. Air density increasing diagonally. That's why? not reality. Why? That's how we refraction that. works. What? We don't need refract. What are you talking about? Refraction fluctuates constantly. It's a flat. You're surface saying there's only one direction rises. that light can refract in. You think direct that light only refracts in one direction. If you, know you have an air works? density, yeah. If you have, it has how to it hit, uh, air of different density. Right. It Which bends way does toward the, the normal. Go? Bends toward the normal line. The normal line. No, no, it doesn't. What's the normal line? What does that mean? It bends towards the normal line. What's the normal line? Uh, Where does the normal parallel. line start? <laughs> bro bro you're saying refraction perpendicular if the earth was flat perpendicular 
When it bend, when it hits so something, what? it bends towards this perpendicular normal line. So Just because you say so, when you have, <laughs> yeah, because I say so. So okay, I've met the Snell's amount of law, I've Taylor. met the amount of um, evidence that you've brought because I said so and my buddy said so. So I guess we're even now. Well, we physically anyway. In the room can go physically measure and falsify the claimed earth at the Earth curvature. You've just appealed to cartoons and stuff like that, but it's called Snell's law, which is that light will bend toward the denser medium. Um, of course, assuming light rays and that light physically travels from point A to point P and refine the photon, but that's a total aside. So we'll just give you all that. It's, I digress. So anyway, it goes anyway, towards a more dense medium. Word it goes towards a more de- that wasn't word salad. It goes more to the towards a more dense medium, right? And yeah. so that's cool. Whatever. We have to use a differential equation, though. We can't use Snell's law for the atmosphere. We have to use something a totally different. Even the differential equation doesn't work for Snell's law. It's a totally different type of refraction. Nevertheless, it's a mathematical construct. It has nothing to do with what you're talking about. That when we explain it. On a globe, we'd use seven over six R, an average based on assuming the R value. So the fact that you think that somehow we wouldn't have a horizon on a flat earth or it wouldn't move around due to refraction on a flat earth is just patently absurd and wrong and objectively not correct in any way. I'm sorry. Amy, I guess math doesn't work because Austin said so. In light fact, bends towards a denser of, medium. And speaking I, of light, my mind can is I blown. ask you guys? Wow. Oh if you have done the shadow experiments that they've been doing for thousands of years, that Eratosthenes and That Aristotle literally proves nothing. Do. Even Neil yeah. deGrasse Tyson says it can be duplicated with a small local light so over a flat a, surface. So that's a no? You can do it with a flat surface and a small local light. Yeah. So that should be, be easily confirmable. Two different ways. That's a no. That could be easily confirmable. How where How's your research going to go visit the uh, small local sun? To go visit the small local sun. Yeah. Your guys' questions are these, these effects. Why do you right, think that you can't? Because you'll the never sun. do I don't the even research. Claim that anybody can visit the sun. I never claim you'll never do the research. The sun. We have done the research. You're just claiming. I've been researching hey, hey, for seven Taylor. years. How, okay, let me ask let you. Let me this, explain. Taylor, how let me did explain. They out, how did they if, find if out I the could distance explain. of the sun? How was the distance of the sun measured? I have no idea. I care about gravity. Oh, no, because you didn't do the research. That's why. You said you cared about they, gravity. Right, I gave I you didn't. 10 opportunities Wait. to uh, provide so, proof for gravity. Ladies and gentlemen, take note there. It's all based that on Taylor assumptions, said, by the way. I don't I'll know give you a big a hint. Question, they never actually is, physically measured it. It's all based on assumptions. Why is Karen B. have to teach you guys? How good for you. skeptical Karen B. was <laughs> that she almost tried to make fun of Taylor for saying, I don't know when that's the correct answer. But that's it's okay. Not the correct, because but there is an answer. More sophistry. There more is sophistry. an answer, though. There is an answer. So why are you making fun of Taylor for not knowing the answer and saying, I I'm don't I'm not making know. fun of Taylor because he just said, well, you didn't do the well, research. Yeah, and then I asked him a that's, question. He says, well, I don't know. And I said, well, it's because you didn't do the research. Once again, yeah, Listen, you know, sophistry. you sit there and... Because <laughs> he just answered like question after question after question after question. And then after he you finally hit a I mean, thing he where he it, said, he I don't satisfactory know. Answer, like, this is all waste of time and sophistry be, amy it is okay, you cool. said to go that, into the q a any, any you said, thoughts if we give everybody have, one or two minutes we can give you a chance to wrap up if yeah. you want to draw together some of the threads from the discussion otherwise you don't have to if you want to say i'll defer you can pass on that we're going to start with go left right which it gets it if you want to go first the floor is all yours yeah sure so um like we were talking about, gravity has never actually been proven in Cavendish. You can't account for the variable of electrostatics. It's always there. So electrostatics is a small, weak force, and it's not strong enough to explain gravity. So although that's all we can prove, they have to claim gravity. So currently, it's called the theory of relativity. And everything hinges upon this idea that light has a constant speed in 1905 to 1915, blah, blah, blah. It's general relativity. And it's admittedly doesn't work. We have dark energy, dark matter. We only discovered in the 30s that the galaxies only had 3% of the mass that relativity would predict. The universe needs to expand 10 times faster. We're off by 10 to the 120th power. Some people guess a little bit smaller than that. So we have dark matter and dark energy that makes up 96% of everything that relativity doesn't predict or cannot explain. In addition, when we take the theory of relativity or gravity, it doesn't work on the quantum scale. It doesn't affect anything. It's not seen anywhere and it can't be discovered or explained. So the theory of relativity doesn't work at all. The problem is there used to be something called the ether in the background. It was thrown out for Michelson-Morley because it showed the Earth isn't moving. 
which in the conclusion, that's the truth that we can physically measure the surface of the earth. It's not curving like they said that it is. And there's no evidence that the earth is moving. And in fact, it's a philosophical decision to pretend that it is. And even Einstein, Stephen Hawking and Edwin Hubble will all tell you, you can't prove that the earth is moving. It's a philosophical decision because we don't want to think that the earth is special. So there you go. There's a summary. There's no physical empirical evidence of any of their claims. It's just sophistry and appeal to consensus and majority. Got it. Karen? Yeah, what, what's it said? <laughs> you got it. That and I measured earth curvature. I measured for earth curvature myself. I've seen it with my own eyes. So I suggest that what you do is you go get a laser, you go get somebody else to help you out and go do those long distance observations yourself. And then you decide whether or not you're seeing light bend around the curve. And also maybe you should study refraction and know that light does bend towards a denser medium and that you get different densities depending on the temperature of the water versus the air above it. If the water is cooler than the air temperature above the water or the water air temperature is cooler than the temperature of the water, you're going to get different light bending in all kinds of different ways. So remember that next time. And Earth is flat. You got it, Amy? Thank you so very much. The Earth is round. We have known this for thousands of years. I wish I could even pin this solely on religion, but Christian medieval theologians knew and recorded that the Earth was spherical and kept it going all the way up until the Enlightenment. So we have known that the Earth is round. We have been able to prove it through not only natural philosophy, but through science. Scientists have known that the world is round through empirical means. We have not only video evidence, but multiple ways that you can do the experiments yourself. I do want to thank Taylor for being my debate partner. Witsit and Karen, as spicy as I've been, I really do love everyone. So sending love to them. And of course, James, for being an awesome mod. And if you guys haven't already hit that like and subscribe button, then what are you doing? Appreciate that. And it is true, folks. I would say this. If you thought your side was more persuasive, and don't worry, Tyler, we're going to give you a chance to speak. But, or, forgive me, Taylor. But I want to say, folks, <laughs> if you thought your side was more persuasive tonight, you're like, you know what? I think they were. A great way for more people to see this video is that you hit like, for real. Because if you hit like, that boosts it in the algorithm, meaning that YouTube will recommend this video to more people. So, if you haven't yet, hit that like button. We have 646 watching live. We're at about 200 likes. We can easily get to 250 with that. Taylor, go ahead with your closing as well. All right. Um, so number one, what we were talking about in the closing. Um, the, so you said that the uh, effect of different shadows of different lengths can be achieved by a small and local sun. So I asked you. Can you show that there's a small and local sun? That should be pretty easy to research. And then you, then we had a bit of a meltdown there, um, which is what would happen if you there was a small a local sun. I believe it's my closing statement. Um, yeah. So you got you guys had a uh, <laughs> a very robust uh, disagreement with the fact that I asked you. Where's the small and local sun then? Because this is your saving, your rescue device for this uh, for this effect. And it should be easy to go discover. Uh, anyway, uh, measuring the Earth yourself, I've, you've given me no reason to believe that your measurements are good or correct. Um, I have no way to tell you from a, a wingnut um, if you're correct. And... Um, <laughs> Oh boy. I I have I have no way to do that. No method. Um and speaking of working methods, we'll get to that. Uh but yeah. You measured some flatness. Other experts have measured curves. And we can look at them. Uh then uh so Austin said that we can't account for electrostatics in the Cavendish experiment, except you can because you can use materials of differing electrostatic strength and you get the same effect showing that the effect is mass. That's what a variable is for Austin. Also, it doesn't matter. The only thing that really matters for my whole argument was the direction of the acceleration. So if there's an electrostatic acceleration, attraction force, whatever you want to call it, it's working on air, 
you claim sometimes it just works on air. Sometimes it just turns off and doesn't work on air, except all the air is accumulating down because it's moving downward because it has a force downward and ex- an acceleration downward. If it could just kept going upward, it would accumulate at the dome. That doesn't happen oh, because it's all seconds. because it's denser at the ground. And this is why working models are important because you can't navigate on a flat earth map and you've presented no working models. And with that, we're going to jump into the Q&A. I want to say thanks so much for your support. We already crushed it with 250 likes. Thanks for that support. If you haven't yet, as I mentioned, many more juicy debates coming up before we jump into these questions. For example, as I mentioned, the bottom right of your screen, King Crocodile returns, taking on David McQueen in a debate on creation versus evolution. You don't want to miss it. Hit that subscribe button as we have many more debates to come. This first question coming in from, do appreciate it. And I'm going to move through as fast as I possibly can. Folks, there are some that I'm going to skip. If you are insulting a guest, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for substantive questions, as many as we can get. This one coming in from Theo Mega Wordy says, let's see. In another universe, the Glovers were on time. Ha <laughs> ha. Just a little just because we started late. David Benscombe, Ben Cosme, thanks for your being with us, says, James is ripped. Okay, thanks for that. The space Audits with Alan says, there's no way to verify images from so-called satellites, even if you compile the raw data, the metadata from it is already removed. I think they're saying that the picture, the alleged pictures from satellites are not real, Amy and Taylor. I think they're saying that... Can you ask that question one more time? They said there's no way to verify images from so-called satellites. Even if you compile the raw data, the metadata from it is already removed. Once again, that just sounds like a conspiracy. It's the the main shtick of a conspiracy theorist. Did you get that data yourself? Did you do that test? Because what they're saying is we don't trust scientists. We don't trust scientific consensus. It is a Fox version of uh of being a contrarian and so uh uh, can you give us a reason for why we should distrust nasa and other agencies nasa i know they hate it and we get paid by them and and george soros but they're actually a fairly well-liked government agency because they keep their butts as uh, as unpolitical as possible. They are just trying to do good things. And for hell, for all much I'll hate uh, Trumpy Stan, he put Let's up Space forward. Force We've got a lot and of questions. Uh, support it. They're doing good work. I just, this one from Brandon Connell says, for the flat earth gas, how do you explain the difference in weight between the North Pole and the equator? Globe Earth slash gravity predicts it? Question mark. Amy and yeah, Snake, so- y'all are awesome. Ooh. That's a good question. So Einstein himself, which most of the Globers don't know this, Einstein himself said in a letter in 1913 um, to Ernst Mach that if the Earth was at rest but the sky was moving around it, there would be a translation of centrifugal force. So you would get the same effect that drags the pendulum around or cause precession in the gyroscope. And that would also affect weight distribution measurements, meaning that the actual weight that's measured would be affected by the centrifugal force and the transition of the system from the moving sky around the Earth at rest frame reference. And that is Albert Einstein himself. Uh, but just the mainstream Google won't tell you that. So yeah, since the sky is moving around the earth, then you would actually have centrifugal distribution within a tor- toroid vortex and uh, it would change the weight distribution. You got Sounds it. windy. This one from Theo Megawordy says graphic designer equals globe earth expert. I don't know what that is referring to. You heard it there, folks. Not taking pod. So let me tell you though, before I, I, I only put an asterisk on it. Because I, she, if she, she's probably an amazing graphic designer, and a graphic design is an amazing degree. But once again, it's like when physicists, creationists, like putting physicists attack biologists, and biologists attack physicists. Because if you get someone in their own field, it seems that they don't have consensus. And so, yes, I would love to see someone in the post-production industry present some sort of methodology that we can take. Uh, to show that it's CGI. You can't just claim it's CGI or visual effects because your gut tells you. Like That's what they say it more. is. That's what they, they say it is. They tell you it is, right, correct. They. This one coming in from NASA. NASA. Appreciate it. 
<laughs> bad jinx. The Batman <laughs> says, Amy and Taylor are about to get flat snacks. <laughs> Brandon <laughs> Connell says, to use the Bible as proof of flat earth, don't you first have to show the Bible is actually correct? Although I don't know if either of you, if no. that came up per se. No, Cameron, no one knows that. That's a straw man trying to that dismiss us. Yeah, Cameron, it's just a straw man. Cameron Hall says, if Earth was flat, wouldn't you be able to see Europe from America using a telescope? Also, why can't flat earthers just go to the International Space Station and show us a picture? Okay. There's angular size change with distance or angular resolution mm -hmm. limit and something called the attenuation of light. So, no, you wouldn't be able to see forever. You have an optical vanishing point. Why can't we go to the ISS and take a picture? That's the question. I mean, what kind of insane, absurd, ridiculous question is that? I don't even know. You got this one coming in from Lunatic Thinker says, <laughs> we have mapped the position of stars in the night sky. Why does the night sky spin counterclockwise when observed from a northern position, clockwise, though, from a southern position, and goes from east to west at the equator? I just explained that. There'd be All an stars effect. rise in the east and set in the west. Yeah. And there would be an optical effect of containment, and it could be magnetic holography, and we can show that a magnetic field would do the same thing. So there's a plethora of options, but literally just a little paperweight will show you that there could be an optical effect that make it happen when you look up. So You're just looking. It depends on which way you're looking at it from. The Wicker Man, thanks so much for your super chat. If you had a question to attach to it, let me know in the live chat. Brandon Connell says, for the Flat Earthers, get your pilot's license and go. It's not illegal. You just need international flying clearance. And planes aren't that expensive to rent for a day. It is okay, illegal. money bags. <laughs> it's you illegal. Got, to like five hundred thousand laying around to charter a jet. Okay. And that's a lie anyway. You can't fly planes <laughs> over Antarctica. It's illegal. You can't do that. They say it's too dangerous. It is a lie. Yeah, the the pilot lies. offered this. Yo, really? Then we we actually contacted him. Yeah. Then we him, held him and to it, he, and then he backed off because yeah, he, he realized he didn't and, do it. He wouldn't even he tell us his snuck, company. Snuck away back into his corner. Yeah, <laughs> you just would you, he just did it so you could say stuff like that. You guys could just exactly. say things. Yeah, and we called his yeah, bluff. I, the pilot I said he would do it. Okay. Account. Okay, we have the documentation of it. So whatever. Yeah. I totally just, trust your account. We have the documentation. Him. You don't have to trust us. You can actually go find that out on your own. Yeah, we have the receipts. Mm -hmm. Have fun. This one from Psychor says Lake Michigan is so big that you cannot see the opposite shore even on a clear day. It's from the curvature of the earth. Team Flat, can you refute this? Lake, Lake Michigan? Lake? You think Lake Michigan helps globe earth? We can see the Chicago skyline across Lake Michigan from up to 60 miles on clear days. Yeah, I from talked to across, locals there. Yeah, Saint, I think, what was it, St. Joseph, I think, Illinois or someplace? Yeah. I can't you can, remember what it is. You can see it always. Like I, I talked to all the locals yeah. there. They said you can see it two to three times a week. So no, you wouldn't be able to see forever over a flat earth. <laughs> it's not complicated. Yeah, things get smaller. Remember like um, Sesame Street near far. Remember that? <laughs> this one from David <laughs> Benz, Ben Cosme says, Brandon, look up Antarctic Treaty. Uh, who's Brandon? Which All right. Say, uh, look up Antarctic Treaty. Does anybody know what that refers to? Not the yeah. Brandon part, the Antarctic Treaty. Yeah, they were just trying to deny that it exists. And you can look it up, and you can look up all the legislation since then. And objectively, you can't freely and privately explore there. Brandon Hanel. <laughs> I brought it up. I brought it up because uh, I do say it exists because the military is banned due to the Antarctic Treaty. Yeah, so are humans Oops. freely and privately exploring and people aren't putting their houses there. No country has been able to expand, like to settle, but that you can still go there. As a scientist, as a private individual, they, they will say, oh, you need to get permission from the government and then you're back at they, but you know, you can go there. You can only go where they allow you. They don't let you go they all the way across it. Yeah. See what I'm saying? You just have so We never history. said you can't go to Antarctica. This one from Brandon. You Connell just can't go do whatever you want there. Brandon Carnell says, uh, what is the name of the law stopping anyone from going there? The Antarctic, the Antarctic Treaty. Treaty. Gotcha. There's additional laws in the United States since then that are subsequent, like legislation underneath that, that are very specific with the laws and the rules. Oh, I just realized that David Benz Cosme was saying to Brandon, who asked that question, that they should look up the Antarctic Treaty. Okay, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm a little bit dense. This one from <laughs> Brandon Connell says, show the sun section, paragraph, and line. 
I don't I don't know what you're talking about. But we did take azimuth and um azimuth like longitudinal readings over a year and it shows that the the sun seemingly is a magnetic a holography that acts as a toroid um so pretty interesting so when he said look for the where's your like local sun like yeah we did azimuth uh distance readings and i put and we showed that it's like a toroid type projection mm-hmm. you got it and want to remind you folks our guests don't worry we have more questions but i want to say this because you're all here our guests are linked in the description so if you i mean since you just got your first potentially first exposure to them hey you can learn more about their views by clicking on their links below what are you waiting for which it gets it karen and b amy and taylor are all linked in the description box and that includes if you're listening via the modern Debate podcast you can find our guest links there as well this one from tim Pryor says if you admit people can go to antarctica then you can't deny them witnessing the 24-hour sun you guys say doesn't exist there. Again, she told you that the guy that worked for NASA that was stationed in Antarctica said he never saw a 24-hour sun. You just see the sunlight. The only supposed footage of it is provably photoshopped and chopped together. So that's kind of sketchy. We have a million shots of it in the north, none of the south. So, yeah, it doesn't exist. Sunlight and sun itself is not the same thing. You got it. Theo Mega Wordy says the Himawari 8 is a compilation of weather data from international systems with extrapolation overlaid on the blue marble data set. It is photoshopped. There you go. Uh, according to what? This one you're asking someone that can't answer their question because I because I looked up the uh MORI data. Did you extrapolate the metadata? You got access to it? No, yeah, you can't, it doesn't let you. You got it, and this one coming in, and so that doesn't mean it can't be or at its fake. Tim, have you guys ever got a photo analyst to prove that every picture of Earth is fake? Have you done that? Have you? Have you? don't have to they admit that it's composite images they, they take high altitude footage and then they put it together stitch it together over a flat map surface wrap it around a ball bring an artist in and do an rendition i don't know why we'd have to have someone prove it when they openly admit that that is cgi and it's not actual full pictures this one from tim Pryor as well so sorry but you guys are going against every scientist and billions of people burden of proof is always on you this is why you guys are not persuading me they said and we said well, this is long they said guaranteed you're lying. You did not talk to a physicist who thinks the world is fine. Flat. I think they meant flat. Physics alone says that's impossible, and all physicists agree with gravity. Have to, you have to lie or be lying right now. We have a chance to respond to that long. Uh, yeah. See, this is what this is a, just a tactic, right? It's baselessly asserting it because, like, they have the confidence of having all the people on their side, but they don't know anything about it. I literally did just now talk to a physicist the other day. All quantum physicists will tell you relativity does not work on the quantum scale at all whatsoever. They're trying to find something called the graviton. It also doesn't work on the cosmological scale. No one is lying. Not all scientists believe anything. Physics is based on the relativistic application, and that's uh, proven to be incorrect on the quantum scale. That's why they're looking for a GUT, which is a new grand unified theory to replace it, because everyone knows that it doesn't work. So just the truth of the matter is tons of physicists actually do know there's something going on with this whole gravity and this earth spinning around the sun thing, because they're trying to reintroduce the ether, which would make it stationary. So yeah, there's a lot of this, a lot of people that think different things. Just want to point out that the general theory of relativity and special relativity right now are as far as we can tell, non-dispute. No one is writing papers against them. I don't know where he's getting this from. And it, the trying to figure out how to tie something big with something small is the theory of everything, or at least that's what its PR term is called. And that's just trying to tie quantum mechanics and general relativity together because we know both are facts. And they don't work together. You're getting there. So you just said no yes. one says that. No and one's a, it facts. was my super chat. I'm finishing the response. And the response to you just blatantly lying is that actually it's known that relativity doesn't work with quantum. So they're looking for a new model. It's admittedly doesn't work on the quantum scale at all. And this is just subjective. This one coming in from Enslaved by Truth says God hates spheres. This one from true, Gord, I didn't true. know either. Gordzilla 37 says, strange clouds has smoked too much. 
globes a fairy tale, fool. Whose strange clouds? <laughs> Sir no Corduroy <laughs> says changing <laughs> mass changes the degree of warp. Okay, yeah, that's a reification fallacy, though. Like, it, it, the question is, does the mass actually warp space time, right? And so, if you just like, look, I changed the mass, therefore I proved that space time bend and warp. Well, that's just begging the question, which is why it's well known that relativity could entirely be wrong, and quantum has actually shown that. And uh, he said that you can control for the electrostatics in the Cavendish, but that's not true. Uh, the best Faraday cage in the world still has electrostatics. If you ground it, still electrostatic. The air inside of the chamber is electrostatic. The balls are electrostatic. The torsion cables and the and the rods are electrostatic, and it barely moves at all, if any. So yeah, electrostatics is clearly the most strong variable there, and you can't eliminate it. And this is objective. All molecular and intermolecular attractive forces are electrostatic in nature. This one from Psychor says, "Straw man, non sequitur. Straw man, straw man, straw man." They didn't say who it was for though. This one from <laughs> Down in the Rabbit Hole. Good to see you. Hope you're well. Says we found a NASA FTP server which has all the Himo. Uh, let me know if I mispronounce this. Himawari 8 raw images. They wrap mm -hmm. flat radar images over the blue marble sphere. The video is on the Flat Earth Clock app under, quote, satellites on the FAQ page. Yes. Hey, Taylor. Once, once again, if you are taking multiple pictures and they are accurate pictures of the world, then I don't know what to say. It's not CGI. They're his claim was that his claim was that it was a real picture, okay, and that it was a single picture that wasn't composite. He just told you you can yes. go look it up. That you can look into the data. It's actually not real pictures, and it's wrapped around a presupposed ball. They don't take a picture of a ball from space, admittedly and provably. What mm. it sounds like you're saying is at a certain point, like on the Google question that I see coming, that certain companies when it goes so big and you can't have a single picture, have to go picture, 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 picture. So right. that's what a composite is. It doesn't mean that the earth is flat. And I once again <laughs> would like for an actual picture of the flat earth. Like what they're saying is, what the flat earth they're saying is, yeah. well, it's not a full picture of the round earth, is it? And then we go, no, that's not how they're trying to put it together. And we say, do you have a single picture of the flat earth? And then all of a sudden, well, they won't let me here. They won't let you go there. All the secrets that... For some reason, it's a dome that we have no evidence of that we can't get to. So I guess my only question would be, mm. why is there no actual pictures of the flat Earth? Why are you such a sophist? Okay. If you don't have an answer, nope. just say, I don't know. That you can't get outside of the Earth. It's stupid. It's a stupid question. We can't get outside of the Earth. So why? if we can why? if we can just compile things from uh, the ground, then there's no reason to have a satellite looking at it from down. There are color there's color correction, and there's overlays on the website that you can turn off. But you there's no point in having deeper. a satellite yeah, if you're just taking all the data from the ground and just put it together. This one coming okay. in from. <laughs> Hates stairs, says Taylor Amy. You look hungry. I was like, I don't know. This, uh, <laughs> I, I don't understand that Sponsored one. Sponsored by Snickers. This Eat one says Snickers. Space Audits with Alan says, if in Einstein's field equations, he uses variables that describe a completely empty universe with bent space time. You don't even know your own religion. It, again, it doesn't matter. People don't know everything about gravity. Therefore, just, gravity doesn't exist. Strong That's, no, you literally said it's not gravity. You said it's <laughs> you. That's what you said. Anyway, uh, yeah, like I said, it doesn't matter what the actual cause. Why does gravity exist? Why does it work? It only matters how it works and basically what direction it works in, which if you want to call it electrostatic, doesn't matter. It's all still moving in the same direction. So it doesn't need a dome. 
This one. Oh, I also out. just want to. Oh, I just want to point out. I want to appreciate once again a negative take on religion. I want to keep on saying that word should be used negatively, and I am still waiting for an actual model to come to our side. It wouldn't it be nice if we could just come some sort of flat Earth model? If we get it. You're scared of the creator, and I have a flat Earth oh, model. It's my. There wife. we go. The create. Oh, you couldn't have said a better Tim word. Pryor that makes says, me happy as a flat plum. Earthers talk about logic. What's more logical? That flat Earthers are smarter than billions, or they watch some YouTube video and are just being duped. Jeremy, you got it. I mean, build a consensus. Yeah. Joshua yeah. Kelly says, "Amy, actual science can be done without papers." Well, act, so science isn't a body of knowledge. It's a process, and the process would be doing a hypothesis, going out there in the field, collecting data, having results, and publishing that methodology so that other people can do it. Because that's the difference between all of the religious views, superstition, doesn't matter. If we were to restart the clock, all of this nonsense would go away. But if we were to delete every science textbook right now, each and every fact would be rediscovered. You got it. Andy. If you could do the science, sorry, if you could do the science, you could publish papers. Yeah, but it won't get actually peer reviewed and published by mainstream academia if it doesn't walk the line. Everyone knows this, so you guys are just chanting. Nope, scientists disagree with each other all the time. They fight a lot. If you actually read any science, you'd know that. I read way more they than do, you ever but have. The only the only the ones who push the narrative that they want to be pushed get published, though. Speaking. Except they they challenge each other's narratives. So you just oh. didn't you just didn't listen to what I said and just but not with repeated your accusation. Thing, no, no one questions like the Earth. You're not allowed to talk about whether or not the Earth is flat or whether or not the no. Earth is not moving. No, you're not. Everyone not in knows mainstream it, so. science. Come on, man. It's just so like weird the, that you guys have to lie so much. We can just move on. The audience can tell you guys are lying. We've got a lot of, of questions, so I'm going to move forward. Okay. Tim Pryor says, well, to be fair, Amy, when flat earthers did do experiments, they proved rotation and curve. Thanks, Bob. Interesting geronism. Notice how after that, all flat earthers stopped doing actual experiments. We not, literally do. That's not true. We, yeah, we do experiments all the time. All the time. And then just like Taylor did, he lied about what happened with that, too. It's just a bunch of lies. But so Jaron actually had to hold it up a little bit, but it showed that it was right in between the globe prediction and the flat prediction. It was actually closer to the flat prediction. But since it was like in the middle, uh, Jaron was like, interesting. So they chopped it up and lied. And yeah, we found 15 degree procession, which is the Sagnac effect. The person that discovered the Sagnac says the vortex in the ether, the gyro, the ringleader gyro is literally engineered and calibrated with the Sagnac effect. He took it to a different altitude at the same latitude and got over a degree in variance showing that it's not the earth spinning at the same latitude it's based on the vortex of the ether that changes at altitude so this is awkward but not only do i agree with the questioner's take but just like uh, the earlier question was bringing up einstein uh first of all you could take your choice if you want to be on team einstein or team conspiracy theory but einstein did not like quantum mechanics he was one of the people who hated it the most and what he did was test it and 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 begrudgingly Einstein had to accept quantum mechanics because of the peer review process that is how strong that it is. You're just reading. He, you don't even know why he didn't like quantum. It's because of spooky action at a distance and superposition isn't consistent with relativity. I read both of his letters where he talks about it. So we should. But he got over it because of science. You guys science, are just pretending right? to know things that you don't know. He knows that it process. doesn't. It's contradictory 11. to relativity because if they're superposition, then the bending and warping of space time would be in all kinds of different positions simultaneously. And that's one of the many problems. You don't know any of it. It also disputes the constant speed of light. We can just move on. This one coming in from. I want to remind you folks if you've enjoyed this debate, if you're like, hey, I like this, this is fun, hit that share button. Right now, you can click share and share it into group threads or Facebook groups, Discord groups, Twitter threads, you name it. Even over a text message, you can send the link to a friend if you think they'd enjoy this type of debate as we are striving to provide a neutral platform to let the chips fall where they may, to let a thousand flowers bloom so that the cream will rise to the top for the best arguments. Delco says, my dad went as part of a private research group and even had their own transport please explain why he lied for years i think they mean went to antarctic said no dodging please 
No one said that he lied. He had to get approved before his private group went. The point is that you can't privately and freely go wherever you want to go. You have to get approved by the government that you are in the country of. It's just objective. It's weird. You guys got to spin it and lie about what we're actually saying. That's called being dishonest. Mm -hmm. But you can go. Question the answer says... I'd just like to second what down in the rabbit hole said. That is true. Delco strikes again and says, Why do our industrial robots need to account for gravitational pull when using a very small and effector next to something with a few microns small? doesn't count for gravity's pull. It accounts with an accelerometer of downward acceleration that we actually get precise measurements with interferometry. That's all that you're doing. You're not actually bending and warping space time and everything's intrinsically electrostatic, which gives you an attractive force. And so again, you know, it's nothing more than downward acceleration using the accelerometers and you're begging the question, which has been debunked within your own paradigm for like the 20th time tonight. This one from Tim Pryor says, Flat Earthers did not come up with science. Nobody that actually does science agrees with them. They should not be allowed to even say the word science. You got it, Karen. You got it. You got the, you got the questions that are just, I think you're better a better diplomat than me. What did he say again? You're I not even you. allowed to use the word science because uh, flat earthers deny science. So they shouldn't even oh, use the word. Flat earthers deny science. That's why we go out and actually do measurements and actually try to try to debunk flat earth that's why we did that you know you guys think we all just came here just believing it we tried to debunk it we want we're i was fine living on a globe we're all fine living on a globe until we the problem is where we find out it's a lie that's where the problem is the problem is not with the globe itself the problem is with the lying i don't think you guys get that <laughs> this one right? coming in from you appreciate your question as tro nut 66 says to wits it if the earth were flat there would be 108.47 miles per one degree of longitude at the equator. But we measure 69.17 miles per one degree. Why? Yeah, you're talking about celestial navigation, looking at the stars, and then you get 69 miles per degree. So, so what you're talking about is uh, actually it's optical declination. They take the optical declination of the sky relative to the observer's angle and the position on the Earth, and they apply that optical declination to the in a, to a presupposed convexity of terra firma itself. So pretty simple. This one coming in from Do Appreciate Your Question. The Sleeper 7 says to Team Cartoon Ball, you don't look at the ceiling to measure the floor. Cheers. Uh, so I assume that's a pot shot at the star spinning and um, you can understand the shape of something you're on based on how things move around. You. So, yeah, this I guess one. we can move on. So this when you're on a him. basketball court and the ball, the players are throwing the ball around, that means that the court that you're standing on is round because there's a ball going around you. If they're doing something that's impossible to witness from a flat surface, then yeah. This one from Tim Pryor says, but the air is thinner at the top of Mount Everest. So no, it does not feel the empty space. You guys have yet to explain that. That's for what the was that? I think that was for Karen B. and Witsit. They said, Wait. but the air is thinner at the top of Mount Everest. So no, it does not feel the empty space, I think they mean Phil. You guys have yet mm -hmm. to explain that. Okay, what, you, what, what, what does that mean to explain that? So we have a pressure gradient. There's an electrical gradient on the Earth. Most of the gas is constantly introduced at the surface. And so based on temperature, production, and introduction of gas at the surface, and an electric gradient, which is 100 volts per meter, then we have a gradient in the Earth. And that's antecedent to gas pressure as physical container. And that's what keeps the closed dynamic system intact, wherein which you can have the electric gradient. So that's all that there is to it. The fact that Mount, pressure, Mount uh, Everest has lower gas pressure is a non sequitur to my actual position or our actual position. The point is that the gas would violently fill the available space if it wasn't for the closed dynamic system giving you the pressure with a gradient determined by the variance of factors that I listed. Tim Pryor. And so I just, there's a non-physical container say, towards the ground. Interesting. In case it wow. was, gravity wow. is why that it gets thinner as we go up and the air gets lighter. Begging the question, fast. Yeah, it would accumulate. You're, you're crushing. <laughs> it would accumulate at the top if there wasn't something pulling it down. 
This okay, one from you guys don't listen, so we'll move on. Tim Pryor says, better question. If you guys do not believe in space, then why do you believe there has to be a container? Well, that's a good question, right? So, so no telling, there's no telling exactly what's up there. Fluid like medium, it seems like it could be super fluid and then a super solid, um, maybe even potentially semi permeable. But what we're saying is for sure, you definitely couldn't have any vacuum without uh, a container. Now, yeah, we don't believe in the vacuum because actually redshift, blue shift, all observations, cosmic microwave background, energy distribution relative to the center of the earth or the earth as the center all shows us that it seems to be a more dense medium, a more local medium, a much younger and much more local lights based on all the observations. So uh, if it's more dense and fluid like, then yeah, technically, you know, it could be a variance of things. It wouldn't necessarily be as big of a deal as the vacuum, but there would be something acting as physical containment. Uh, regardless this one coming in from do appreciate it tim Pryor says better question if you guys do not believe in space then why do you believe there has to be a container yeah same same answer the necessary antecedent to gas pressure is physical containment we would have to have something physically containing it uh relative to whatever it is that's up above us which is a variance of things even edwin hubble himself said it could be a much more dense medium if there's a misinterpretation of redshift but you know clovers don't know these things but this yeah one. so it could be a lot of things this one Even though there's from. no pressure pushing back at the top. Sir Corduroy says, Witsit uses real citations but warps them fantastically to fit his narrative. I doubt he's even read these understanding atmospheric pressure isn't hard. So, yeah, I've literally read all the things that I talk about. It's not about understanding it. I understand the globe very, very, very well, like typically better than most of the Globers. That's why I don't believe in it. And, you know, so just like falsely attributing like incompetence to the other side and chanting doesn't actually mean anything so the truth is i do understand it and yeah i'm just explaining gas pressure two different comments in a row i just explained how relativity is just a is a figment of your imagination attributing physical properties to conceptual abstractions which is a reification fallacy and it doesn't work within your own paradigm so whatever man this one coming in from crimson air says globe side can you explain the selenium selen Alien, aka impossible eclipse where the moon is en shadowed when the entire sun is still above the horizon i don't know what that kind of eclipse is so oh, no. so i got you i'll explain it for the guy that sent it it's called the selenillion eclipse it's a lunar eclipse where the sun and the moon are both above the earth during the eclipse so he's asking if the earth is blocking the sun and casting a shadow onto the moon then how could we have the lunar eclipse if it's the Earth's shadow, if the sun and the moon are both above the Earth during the eclipse? Don't know. I, don't, I never studied eclipses. And I do have a paper from space.com that's explaining uh, when we have a lunar eclipse. Sun, Earth, and moon are geometrically straight in line of space with the Earth in the middle, so if the sun's above horizon, must be below horizon, completely out of sight. Uh, oh, it's go oh, it's going towards their favorite word, atmospheric Refraction. retraction. Okay, so there is an actual explanation. Which is that the sun looks like it's in the sky, but it's actually not there. And the sun and the moon are not where they look like they are. They're both just looking like they're in the sky when we see them. Wow. Yeah, you know, you Science. affirm a refraction, so... Affirm in the sure consequence. Affirm in the consequence. This one coming in from Samir yeah. Farsane says, How come all people who toured the world on hot air balloons came back from the opposite side? How come none were gone forever if Earth isn't a globe? How? Circumnavigation east to west is literally very easy to do on a flat Earth. You just go around relative to north. The idea you think that east to west circumnavigation is somehow impossible just shows you haven't actually even understood flat earth yet, um, which is why you're probably not a flat earth. Or north to south circumnavigation would be impossible on a flat earth. The same way you go happened. around the block. Same way you go around the block, you can That's go around the earth. That's not a straight line. Got it this Neither one. is circumnavigation. It's yes, it is. That, that's the they point of why it's round, is they went all the way around. She doesn't Round. Need. Yes. Tim yeah, Pryor strikes lady. again, says, but yet millions of people have jobs depending on gravity's existence. Again, this is why I'm so skeptical. 
Again, so no, they don't have any jobs depending on gravity's existence other than downward acceleration being 9.8 meters per second squared, which is basically just the, the weight distribution or density and buoyancy relationship of something being more dense in the air and going down. It's called accelerometers. 9.8 meters per second squared is the effect. It does not in any way prove that gravity is real, which is what claims to be the cause. No one's denying people's profession using the fact that things go down at agreed upon average once again, it's a it's a drastic misunderstanding of the whole thing. You got it. Yeah, there's no science except all the technology that metaphorically makes the world go around. He said it again, but it just uses accelerometers, which is the effect. So all you're doing is baselessly chanting. It's called sophistry. This one coming in from Brandon Connell says, "Flat Earthers, why does time dilation have to be taken into account for satellites if space time isn't real?" Snake be, may be able to elaborate more. <laughs> no, he can't. Uh, yeah, so that is a way to prove that uh, the prediction that mass, uh, you know, affects time, space time. Okay. So you don't, you don't know. That, you don't know. Uh, yeah. Can I help you? Can I help you? Since uh, it was to I would you. like you. Well, you said I could answer, but. Uh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Anyway, the don't prediction know. is that space time that space time is affected by mass. So the That's more you remove it, it from the mass the more you can, the more you have to correct for uh, time dilation. That's not what because it is. Because satellites are further from the mass. That's not what it is, though. Yes, so, it is. No, actually. <laughs> it's based on the convention of the speed, the speed of light. And so since the speed of light is actually just presupposed to be constant in the same one way as two way, because we don't have two way, there's never, I mean, a one way speed has never been measured. So we just have a two-way using a mirror. So Einstein wrote in his paper, well, we're just going to assume that it's the same both ways. So they use this convention for the relaying of transmissions of different data from the satellites. And then assuming the speed of light, they actually account for the time differential of the clock because you can never prove that the two-way speed is accurate because you can never move one clock to a, from one position to another without it not being synchronized. So that's what it actually is talking about. It's not just you vaguely saying the words mass and space time. Right, and the light moves differently process. based on what mass it's closer to. No, no, it's about action. It's about I think motion. Think you can just drop that from the equation. It's about motion, and it and it'll make sense. It's about motion and speed of light because when something's in motion, it supposedly time dilates and widens, and therefore slows down based on motion. So I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. We can move on. That's also <laughs> part of it. This one coming it's the whole in part of it from David. Ben Scombe, Ben Cosme. So this question for James, is the beef with Professor Dave real or is he making it up as an excuse to not debate Witsit without a biased moderator because he only wants to debate Witsit on a biased platform? I have no idea what's going on with Professor Dave. I, I don't. I haven't heard him saying anything about modern day debate or me. I don't remember us ever having a, pla uh, a conflict. So I don't think I've even heard from him email wise for like a year as I've reached out to see if you wanted to come on. So I, I don't know what's going on there. This one from Samir says, Witsit said, quote, planets orbiting. Then says, does he believe they're also flat? Or is Earth the only oddball? Planets can't be flat. Even I hmm. can see them spin. Oh, my gosh. So when I was talking about planets orbiting, I was talking about the idea that the Earth is a ball, the model that is believed you know, so whenever they try to claim that Earth's a ball going around the sun and along with other planets orbiting, they have to claim something stronger than electrostatics because electrostatics wouldn't work. So that's where you have to get the need for coming up with gravity. I mean, yeah, dude, I don't claim planets are flat. They're not terra firma. They're not solid. So solar luminescence would give you the the literal optical illusion of an orb, like as in a as a, a spherical orb of light. There's all kinds of things that it could be. I don't make claims that I don't know, I can only speculate, and the fluctuation and the non-static nature of them, the dynamic nature of them, seems to be consistent with sun luminescence. This one coming in from Kyle says, how was it possible for astronauts to go through the Van Allen radiation belt when they claim today they haven't discovered the technology to do so? Is that for us? I think so. That sounds yeah. like a conspiracy, so I'm going to need some evidence Taylor, like, you know what it's talking about. Come on, man. I'm not an Australian program. I'm not an astronomer. So you know what it's know talking why about. They could go to the moon. Uh, is, is this about 
Oh yeah, that we don't currently have technology because no, we didn't make it and any more of it. And the one that we did make is old. And you can't replicate it. They said it's hard. It's a difficult process to but, recreate the technology. Oh yeah, I'm sure it is. But they already did it. What's the point of spending money to do it again? They say they've been trying to do it the whole time. They literally claim they're trying to go with the Artemis program right now. What are you even what talking about? What about Mars? Notice the theme here. Dude. It's that they're lying to you. They're holding something back. They, 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 they. No, they. we're telling you what they said, Amy. You only have talking points of sophistry. This is us it. quoting NASA. That's what or called. you're Pettit. misrepresenting it to make it sound as ridiculous as possible. I'm quoting it verbatim. No, I would love they to go say to the, yeah, what they the say is ridiculous enough. We don't actually have to change and anything NASA says because it's ridiculous. You guys don't know any of it. Also, it. the word Sorry. sophist a lot. I would you're like sophist. to know: Are you just a rhetoricist? Do you have any empirical evidence, or is it just your opinion that it's flat Earth, which is what I've heard today? This one um, say, oh, that you're a sophist. Wait, go go ahead. Joshua yeah, Kelly says you have to literally lie to yourself to claim that all "quote unquote" impossible observations are the cause of refraction. The globe is dead. I have to lie to myself because I know refraction exists and can explain it. I'll read it again. You have to. You literally have to lie to yourself to claim that all "quote impossible" observations are the cause of refraction. Well, if it's something that can be caused by refraction, why wouldn't I think it was refraction when it looks like it's refraction? You got it. This one coming in from David Ben Cosme says, James, thanks regarding Professor Dave. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on. With Prof I've never heard from him in a, or I've not never heard. I haven't heard from him in a long time. I'm open. The door's open if he wanted to debate Witsit on Modern Day Debate. I know that was something that some people were talking about. But no, I, I hadn't even reached out to him. I don't know what's going on if he said anything about Modern Day Debate. Has he? Uh, like, I'm curious if he did say anything about Modern Day Debate or me. Kango44 says, Witsit holding the most dishonest position ever. Take a weekend off and measure a shadow in three locations at the same time of day, just like it was done <laughs> 2,000 years ago. Sticks done. and shadows, what's it? Don't you get it? Yeah. We just explained. <laughs> we explained. You can literally show you can do it with all kinds of different locations on a flat surface, and I can map it out and tell you how the the flat table is a sphere. If you have a closer light uh, source, it explains it, not to mention taking azimuth, uh, distance measurements from the same longitude for an entire year show that the, the sun actually has a magnetic holography effect as if a toroid breathing in and out in a sort of way. It's an optical illusion in a way relative to your position. That's what the data shows. So uh, yeah, there's tons of different ways to explain it and it doesn't in any way work unless you assume a distant sun, an infinitely distant sun with parallel rays and you assume the surface of a, of a globe and you should know this by now if you've been looking into it. That's really, really kind of sad. Find that small local sun and I'll convert. Good one. This one from Kango44 says, Witsit holding... Oh, we got that one. Sir Corduroy says, ironically, Witsit just demonstrated that he doesn't understand refraction. I don't know. They don't say what they're referring to. Weird World says, been a flat earther for three years now, and I've never been more sure the earth is flat than after hearing these two cartoon-loving globers Debate Austin and Karen. Stop worshiping these cartoons. And can I just say, I like those words because once again, it's a form of projection. We only have video and photos and they only have cartoons. There is no such thing as a, a photo literally of don't the have flat any Earth. Photos. They admit there's That's no real just photos. Said, you literally don't literally have any no photos. real photos. No, Amy, you they said say... that you had photos. I'm. You don't. Okay, but that's not true. You could say that. No, it is true. So you NASA NASA says says that tells you that they ISSB? don't have photos. Okay, NASA so there you go. But see, NASA notice. NASA says so. Okay, can I ask, is there a journal that you would accept? Like if I were to go to Nature, if I were to go to specific physics journals that said the Earth is round and I could show you different people, would you actually, is there any actual source you would accept? I verifiable would accept evidence. it if it was, yeah, there you go. Verifiable, repeatable evidence, yes simple okay i mean that is what all of the empirical evidence that's why the physicists is why it's taught in you know middle and high school i don't know no we can continue yes no that's you're not just why a it's taught. not 
taught? No. Oh, why is it taught there in middle and high school? Is it they because again? they they want to blindly believe it? It was proposed about five hundred years ago by Jesuits, who then proposed that there was a Big Bang theory and a previous sure. energy, which was Jesuits, and then they admittedly Einstein, Edwin Hubble, and uh, Stephen Hawking will all tell you that we choose to believe that the Earth is a ball that spins around the Sun, although it can never be proven according to relativity. The Cartesian coordinate systems are the same. We believe it because of the Copernican principle, which is the idea that the Earth cannot occupy a special or unique position in the universe and so based on philosophical grounds of quote-unquote modesty we must ignore the intolerable position that the earth is special at all costs and avoid that horrific location oh. or idea so it's philosophy and that's your answer it's not science it's philosophy without actual empirical evidence also known as a religion so amy ironically you are in one of the world's biggest religions Sure, that doesn't Word. make sense, but I just want to point out that the -uh. round earth doesn't come from Jesuits preets. That's kind of cray cray. It has been around for thousands of years. It survived for thousands of years. Some of the medieval Christian uh, uh, natural philosophers actually kept it while the peasants were thinking that it was a flat earth. Nonetheless, it is not a religion, but I want to keep on saying, well, uh, the four debaters on here, we can all agree religion is bad, ladies and gentlemen. It's just great to... You're uh, in a religion, uh, though. I'm not. Yeah. But I'm glad you're using it negatively. Religion. Can you can heliocentric religion. Just you keep on using religion bad, please. Okay. We're not. Kangle NASA just pays too much. Wait, James exactly. trying to talk. Source James trying to talk. Kingo44 says, Witsit do T-jump radar experiment measuring the moon would take you a weekend. Done. If you were actually a truther, you would just do it. That's hilarious, actually, because when you presuppose that you send the radio waves to the uh, moon, how do you differentiate between the spectrum that you already receive when it comes to the background radiation from the sky? Oh, you don't know the answer. Secondly, NASA actually says that it takes like many, 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 many or chances and even 10 years to hit the one that supposedly goes around it. In addition, they claim they did it before they had the reflector. In addition, then actually by the time that the signal got back, the Earth would have moved so far away from it, you'd have to be significantly far away from where you originally sit it. And in addition, we've actually taken that same spectrum that allegedly goes through the ionosphere, then sent it over over across the earth and it goes hundreds and hundreds of miles too far when it should be allegedly reflecting back down also debunking it with horizontal pro horizontal propagation so there's no way to actually distinguish that there's not just cosmic rays it's just a baseless reification and begging the question fallacy per usual this one from technics one says is this a debate about flat earth or about distrust in the globe is there cgi of flat earth too or only of the globe mm -hmm. thanks for the great show if the earth isn't physically curving anywhere then what is it David Ben Cosme said, James, <laughs> I thought you guys got along too. That's why I think, I don't know what's going on with Professor Dave. Seriously, this one. Flat Earth, <laughs> Abby Lara B says, Modern Day Debate, question for Taylor. Calling you out, Taylor. Can you name one experiment that replicates water sticking to the exterior of a shape? I know it's not going to answer what you want, but you can just put water on shapes and it'll stick to the exterior. It's not because of gravity, but uh, since you worded your question so poorly, that's what you get. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Him's sake says, thanks for hosting, James. Keep it up. All credit to the speakers. For real, folks, they're linked in the description. Appreciate your support, him's sake. And our guests are linked even in the description box of the podcast, which is growing fast, you guys. It's ad-free. So if you don't like ads on YouTube or maybe you're like, hey, I, you know, I like listening to debates, but I don't want to have to rely on my data because if I'm driving through a part of town that, you know, doesn't have a connection, which I often experience, it's nice you have the podcast and you can find our guests linked there in the description box too. Brandon Connell says, I've personally been on top of the Lake 3 building. Uh, let me say that again. I've personally been on top of the Lake Way 3 building. You can physically see the North Shore, but you can't go on the ground, no matter what. Explain. Who's that for? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't just me that wasn't sure. This one coming in from, <laughs> if, anybody, if any of you know, let me know. I think it's the Antarctic they're referring to, if I had to guess. I don't know for sure. It said, I've personally been on top of the Lake Way 3 building. You can't physically see the North Shore, but you can't on the ground, no matter what. The North Shore of what? I'm not sure. I'll keep an eye on the chat in case they update me. Kang044 in the meantime says, question for the Flat Earth people. So, the sun does not change in angular size as it sets. I can watch the sun set twice from a higher vantage point. 
please explain this on a flat earth perspective a flat earth perspective please please don't say perspective it's angular it, resolution if you go higher than you're widening the angular angle of resolution the sky's on a different plane it's on a higher um plane yeah they're asking that we why we can see further plane. when we go up yeah 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 when you go when you go higher above a flat surface you can also see further and the angular size change of the of the sun, actually, uh, you can look at stellarium, and it'll tell you that there's a time of the day where the sun changes angular size and actually gets smaller than bigger than smaller than bigger. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, but yeah, it seems to be similar to a focal point where it's in a certain uh, part of the atmosphere that it doesn't change. And you go higher above a flat surface, you can see further as well. Just like Karen B said, it's it's like elementary. This one, dear Watson. Kangle. Sorry, King of. I was just saying, dear Watson. Sorry, God. Brandon. <laughs> This one coming in from Sir Corduroy. Oh. Kango44 says, The fact we are real-time video streaming this debate is proof that Witsit is very, very wrong. <laughs> wow, Earth must be a ball, bro. That, that was crazy, crazy good comment. Astronaut66 says, Witsit, if the Earth were flat, there would be... We already got that one. Question the answer says, Amy and Taylor, your crusade against truth is fruitless in all caps. Funny enough, we are skeptics that we don't, we want to believe as many true things and as few false things as possible. And so we are always open minded. I think there is a good Richard Dawkins quote that says, open minded, just not so open minded that your brains fall out. But Taylor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think it's a simple thing. Uh, just show me the, the small local sun. And I'll convert instantly. I think it would be cool to have my mind changed. I do it all the time. Like uh, my mistrust of the government, for example. We see it every day, buddy. Show, show me the long distance ball of gas in a vacuum. Like go yeah. above it. Or you can't throw go something above it. It's too it. high up. You can't go that high up. What are you talking oh. about? You're asking Why to go not? above the sun. But it's in the atmosphere. So, so... We don't actually know where it's at. We don't know if it's in the container, outside the container. You can see it. We don't container. even assume that the sun is actually a physical object that you can go physically touch. Exactly. Could be magnetic. You can see it. Just look at it and go toward it. We just told you that it could be there magnetic. There are flying machines. Humans invented flying machines. You'll get there Any one day. Any jet pilot will tell you that you can't. You can't chase the sun though, like that. Do you mean it's like you can't touch the faster. sun because you'll burn? Like, is that what you're telling it's us? It's, or like, it's you're it's always moving? You guys have, yeah, nothing but straw man fallacies, which means you're probably wrong if all you can ever do is lie about the other side. It was a question for clarification. It was a stupid question because it's a straw man. Okay, well, this one. that just sound. never mind. Continue, love out there. He's only got a couple responses. <laughs> yeah. so. David you just straw manned us and said we could go above the sun if the earth was flat. You don't understand anything that's actually being stated. That's called a straw if it man. Was lo if it was local. You can't go high if it's low. What if it's thirty miles? Is that still considered local? What if what if it's a hundred miles up? Is that still considered local? Why don't you go try and find it? You can't I go higher know. than that. You can't go. You can't go that high. Thanks for playing. Also, you Taylor, there's a rocket? reason that they don't because they're the, move like forward. one of the recent flat earthers built a rocket and it exploded. So when they try, that dude admittedly crash. wasn't an actual flat earther. David Ben Cosme says for for Taylor yeah. best flat proof. James put up this video, which shows refraction, films feet to prove she's not elevated. I can't post the link in the super chat, but I'll post in the chat underneath this. I, like, I'm sorry. I, I don't think that there's links. Like, it's I don't think YouTube allows you to post links in the chat unless you're like a moderator. So if you're if you want to come on for a debate or something that works, but it's hard for me to like put up a video that one of the speakers isn't asking to be pulled up. So. David Ben Ben Cosme, uh, email me at moderndatabate at gmail dot com if you're interested. Though, Samir, thanks for your question. Says we should start a petition for Elon Musk to take the leader of flat earthers on the next space flight if he promises to tell his friends what he saw. Maybe David Ben Cosme again says Taylor and Amy Google Earth turns into CGI once you zoom out past airplane altitude, proving no satellites in space. When I started Googling some of the stuff that he was doing, it is all flat earth sources, which means this is their narrative shtick. If you feel that you have uncovered something, once again, publish a paper. This one from King044 <laughs> says, hang on, all the stars are less than three miles away then? 
because that's as far as I can see when looking over the ocean. And according to Witsit, that's because light does not go forever. Very ignorant. Yeah, it's called the attenuation of light, which is relative to the medium density. And over the water is a much more dense medium than directly above you. And we don't claim to know the medium differentiation or composition composition of what's above us. And we also don't know what's up there. Again, it could be sun luminescence. So just an ignorant, basic misunderstanding of attenuation of light. Also, light does not go on forever. Look up the inverse square law of light. This one from oh, yeah. The Wicker Man <laughs> says, Amy and Taylor, drop the mic. Boom! You got fans out there as well. Tim Pryor says, you're lying again. And call it. In college, I went to Antarctica. I myself witnessed the 24-hour sun. You did not see the actual sun in the sky for 24 straight hours. If you did prove it, you're the first one ever to have the actual yeah. evidence. Just because you're saying it on the internet, we're not going to blindly believe you because we happen to know that ah. it's just 24-hour sunlight. It isn't actually 24-hour sun. And so that's just a cool story, by the way. When you went to Antarctica, you were on an approved guided tour, guaranteed you can't go without getting approval. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question as well. Brady D says, Taylor, is the moon in Earth's atmosphere? Depends on where you cut it off. It's not really. There's some air. There's a little, some air particles up there. But uh, no, you could fit all the planets between the Earth and the moon. Yeah, I would say it's the nitrogen, oxygen, and other gases that are on our uh on the planet it's that the moon is just uh tidally locked with us it is uh going around us as we go around the sun this yeah since in the it, atmosphere you guys since it's there. a since it's a gradient there's no like hard cutoff point so so the atmosphere actually goes all the way to infinity got it great story we'll move on that's, that's not really <laughs> so oh, straw man straw man yeah, that is what you just that. said you said there's no cutoff so if there's no cutoff then where does it end it's not what I said. Then where does it end? Yes, you did. In atmosphere, I said it's a gradient. You can get to zero in a gradient, but there's no hard boundary anywhere in the gradient. Where do you get in to atmosphere zero? Atmosphere is just the gases mm -hmm. surrounding a planet. Mars is half of our size, and thus it has a much smaller atmosphere because it has a smaller gravitational pull. Oh, the moon really? doesn't is it have half an atmosphere. The atmosphere? Yes, really? <laughs> yes, it, it does the... have a little atmosphere. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> there you, don't you even go. Know you're talking about the two PhD scientists. Good. You have it. This one from You'll Tim Pryor says your phone does Photoshop pictures. Why do you guys think? Uh, keep thinking Photoshop means fake. Uh, you can Photoshop all kinds of stuff. Like Photoshop was first done in like the early 1800s. So Photoshop's been a thing for a long time. But you can take real pictures of something and Photoshop it. So no one's claiming that just because someone does a composite, that means it's fake. But the fact like I can take a composite of my car down the road. But the point is that there's no actual real picture and they take composite over cartography planes, right? Which just gets flat map projection then wraps around a presupposed ball. And dude, it's pretty simple, man. Just like Karen B said, we would believe in the ball if it was legit. We don't have like some independent motivation to believe that there's this giant conspiracy that the earth is flat. There's no actual evidence for it. The government always lies. We've caught NASA lying tons. And just seeing cartoons, admitted CGI composites are not satisfactory to us. We need verifiable evidence. We can't trust the government, man. This one. It's almost like it's almost like navigation only works when the composite is curved. Hmm. This one's Good wrong. one. Huh? He doesn't know what he's talking about. How's a great circle work? Yeah. The satellite navigation? is also used for navigation. It was presupposes the, the it's Earth curved. being a ball. <laughs> so that's MOR is used for navigation. Dude, it's insane, dude. How, how do you explain the meridian yeah. great circle route on the Earth if there would be over 3,000 mile differentiation between your five hour trip down south with 500 kilometers an hour? How do you explain that there's 3,000 kilometers difference that you don't have to account for on the meridian? longitudinal great circle route since you're talking about now there's no there's no problem accounting for distances on any globe models that problem occurs when you try and put the earth onto flat maps okay you don't understand the question All the earth would spin flat. underneath the plane 3,000 kilometers going north to south on the the longitudinal uh, meridian great circle route well, I, I didn't hear because you kind of talked over each other for a second the great circle route on the globe Earth on the longitudinal routes of the meridian would have drastic differentiation because the Earth would spin underneath it 
So you'd have 3,000 kilometers in a five-hour trip, yet we don't see that, and there's no correction accounting for that. And, and flat earth, globe earth, there's other talk about the great circle route east to west as if it proves that the Earth's a ball when you can have circles on a plane. But no globe earther can ever give any adequate explanation for how you have a great circle on the meridian, on the longitudinal, without having to account for uh, the spin of the Earth at all. They never have an answer. This one Almost from. like engineers account for that. They don't. This one from David Ben Cosme says, since Professor Dave doesn't want to debate wits it on modern day debate, get fight the flat earth instead. Eh, maybe. I mean, they've debated a lot, but let me see who else I can get. I think I can get some, some big timers for wits it in addition, because it just, like I said, there's just been a lot of debates between fight the flat earth and wits it. I think if I remember right, you guys have, well, I'm not told, I'm not debating him out of principle ever. Samir Farsane says, are 2 billion Chinese people lying when they say it's 12 a.m. there when it's noon here and vice versa? Otherwise, how would you explain it with flat Earth? That would be explained with a small local sun, a small local light moving over a large plane of the Earth. That's how. Wow. Or the light stops short in one direction and goes much longer in the other. No, I think we're going to stick huh? with what Karen B. said. Thanks, though. This one from... Dave Hinkle says, can Amy please invite her favorite scientist for the next debate? I mean, sure. I, I invite my favorite sci. I would prefer any. Well, first of all, I have in love my debate partner, Taylor. He'd be amazing. Um, but I will, I mean, any physicist and with uh, James approval, I mean, I will do any debate, bring it on. Um, but I mean, if Sean Carroll wants to join, I mean, if we're just going out there, it's me and Sean Carroll, baby. So we'll bring it on, I guess. Juicy. And John Locke says, why do flat earthers go out and do all the research and globies just sit behind the computer spouting mainstream indoctrination? Is it impossible for globies to think logically for themselves and prove anything empirically for themselves? Well, they won't go to the small local sun. They won't go to Antarctica, even though you can. <laughs> you might you might have to fill out some paperwork uh, or, you know, spend some money or become an explorer. Oh, uh, who can figure out how someone does that? This one from Tim Pryor says it takes Pixar 30 minutes to render one CGI frame. And do you actually believe Himawari could do it every 10 minutes, Austin? Oh, well, I know that it just takes, uh, there's already, there's a huge database of all the weather already. And yeah, you could easily just con like add it together in a composition laid over the blue marble that's already there. So yeah, you could absolutely do it with all the, the data already accessible. That's correct. And you're also not comparing to uh, uh, qu the same quality image. They're not equal. When you're talking about a Pixar, you're talking about a much higher quality image than what they tell you the Himwari 8 is. So, yes, you actually could render the quality of the Himwari quite quickly, less, much less than 10 minutes as compared Boom. to rendering a full um, a full high resolution movie. I'm talking about yeah. a movie. And He's I would like smoked. to see a flat Even Aether though... actually do that and not just make that claim because it takes a lot of time and energy to render things. Not in that low of depends quality. What it Did is. you not hear it? It depends her. the quality. <laughs> Like and I said, if you, you stretch... can replicate it as a flat earth, try and actually do that. You're oh. saying it's so easy. Oh, they can just let's, do it. They can just throw up an algorithm. Let's just move on. This one and if you stretched it. an image to fit a, a shape that it doesn't actually map onto, then you're going to have differences in quality, image quality, and it's not going to fit, and it's not going to resemble reality, and you're not going to be able to navigate based on it. Okay, you don't navigate based on Himawari pictures, buddy, so we can move on. They do. You don't know what you're talking about. Literally, no, they don't. They Nobody do. does You that. don't know what you're talking about. David okay, Cosme. cite one person in the we chat. I'll go. give you money. we got to move forward. David and Cosme says, Amy and Taylor, there are treatments for cancer that perform better than chemo and radiation. These treatments are not peer-reviewed, though. So How am I supposed to know a that? name for alternative medicine that works. It's called medicine. And so if they would like to get those type of cures, which may actually be out there. There are things that we don't know and are learning in medicine all the time. And I don't mean to be a record keeper, a record, a, uh, a broken record, but you need to peer review. This one coming in from, I appreciate it. Simon, the science guy says, are meteorites breaking through the glass dome, Austin? 
I know that's a ridiculous question, but ironically, all meteors came from the same six radiant sources for all recorded history. And so that actually debunks the heliocentric model on its face because it would come from different parts of the sky, but they're predictable reoccurring cycles. They're cyclical and all meteor showers come from the same six radiant sources. So debunked in heliocentric, and it looks like they're actually uh, just electrical discharges. So there's the answer. This one from Josh says, Amy and Taylor are the essence of cognitive dissonance. Says, Amy, if you actually want to become a comedian, you must, you must watch Jim Brewer's Somebody Gotta Say It. Sure. Well, first of all, Jim Brewer is a fantastic comedian. I love his stuff. Um, but there's only one bar to being a comedian, and that is going up on stage. Because you could be a bad comedian, a good comedian, that's really up to the audience. But if you want to call yourself a comedian, all you need to go is go up on stage and put a microphone in front of your face. Tim Pryor says, standard. Bob, did that experiment or Bob did that experiment three times, even closed the gyro, still picked up a 15 degree per hour drift. Stop lying, Austin. Okay, so watch. I'm gonna say it again, but this is what this is the problem, James. Right? Like they don't want to know the truth. They'll say the same thing tomorrow. Like I didn't say all this. Okay, but Einstein himself will tell you that if the Earth is stationary and the sky was moving around it, you would get a translation of motion to the interior of the system, and you would get centrifugal and Coriolis effects. The only difference is, is that it would actually be actual effects, and as opposed to fictitious, with the Earth moving. In addition, we know it's from the Sagnac effect. That's how the ring laser gyro is calibrated, which he said it was the vortex in the ether. It's also proven with Michelson, Gell, Pearson, from by with Michelson. Michelson Morley debunks that the earth is moving. And so we get the 15 degrees per hour, but it's not because the earth is moving. And then Bob took it to a different altitude at the same latitude and got over a degree difference, which debunks that it's the axial rotation that has to stay the same when at the same latitude. Okay. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. John Rapp says, how does one get gobbledygooked, gobbledygook out of a beard? My beard? Tim Pryor says... So basically, you agree with gravity, but just don't like the name and come up with a different word for it, Austin. Gravity? Oh, it's not that I'm incognitous. It's that all the empirical evidence ever literally shows that relativity is wrong. Even if I presuppose the Earth was a ball, all the evidence shows that it's wrong. Relativity says you can't prove that the Earth is moving, so I can give it that. At least it's it's honest in that sense because it says all evidence shows the Earth's not moving. I don't have to give it a different name. I'm talking about what we can actually replicate and demonstrate to demonstrably be true, which is that everything that has matter is electrostatic, and that's an attractive force, and we have an electric gradient on the Earth. Everything else claimed about relativity is literally not proven, and quantum mechanics debunked all those claims. This one from Tim Pryor says, but the ceiling's normally the exact same shape as room, which means the floor. What? I don't like my, if I see a light yeah, bulb, I don't think so it makes the ground a light bulb. I think that's for us. Maybe so, yeah. <laughs> if if the ceiling was spinning around and we saw it spinning in one direction that way, one direction that way, but we look at the ceiling and no part of the ceiling is actually getting further away from each other, then we're the one moving and we're on uh, – Anything but flat, basically. It could, it could be a cube. This one can't be fun. flat. I've got to say, folks, just because we want to try it, we're going on. It's getting close to three hours. It's been like two hours and 55. So I do want to say, please, we probably can't take any more new questions at this point. Please, we, we want to get our speakers out by a decent time so they can get to sleep. So I want to say thanks for your questions, but we probably can't take any more as of this announcement. Technix1 says, so no container now, just electrostatic? That's just another straw man fallacy. No one said that. There has to be physical containment. It's the necessary antecedent to gas pressure. We don't have to make claims as to exactly what it is. It could be all kinds of things. We don't make claims about the medium. I just said that it could be a fluid-like medium. It's some luminescence above it. This one from... You said all matter was affected. Flat Earth Gemini says, Taylor first said all scientists are in agreement, then later stated scientists fight all the time. Yeah, um, that's saying that you can bring up something that they disagree with and fight about it. They're all in agreement on this particular subject. 
you could bring it up. You could fight with them about it. Um, there are subjects that they do fight about that they don't all agree with. This subject they do, but the point is, is that they're not against you disagreeing or breaking the paradigm on principle, which is the conspiracy theory that these guys have. This one coming in from... It, it, well, can I just Tim. add on re really quickly? No, just, sophistry, uh, Amy. You got to do better than that. Well, no, when we come up when so we come up with a new concept, scientists fight over it, and then eventually it's whittled down to there is a scientific consensus. And that's not relativity. Gotcha. That this is one relativity. coming in from... No. Do appreciate it. Tim Pryor says, instead of all the mind words, you could have just said, I don't know about the dome. Uh, I already said I don't know exactly what it is that is containing. I just know that it's there for like the 400th time. There just has to be something <laughs> physically containing it. Tim Pryor says, I like how it's all could be, maybe, possibly be, but no evidence. Not sure. Literally, we have all the same evidence as you, which is naturally occurring observable phenomena and observations. You guys make up fairy tales that maybe Polaris could be 400 light years away. Then you guys just changed your mind, said, never mind, it's 323 light years away just a few years ago. So your little model that you think is so perfect literally isn't perfect. They're guessing as well, ironically. The only difference is you're making claims that are can be debunked within your own model, like dark matter and dark energy and the quantum scale. Someone's trying to say that that doesn't matter. It does matter. There's still mass on the quantum scale, which means it has to have been in one space time so ironically when we speculate that's what you're doing only we're honest enough enough or enough to know that we're speculating and we don't pretend it's scientifically proven it just gets changed every day this one from tim Pryor says virgin galactic is now selling tickets to go to space are you going to say everybody that has money to go there is also going to be in on the conspiracy Going a few miles up in the air doesn't prove that the Earth is a ball. They don't even claim to go up above or outside of the low Earth orbit. They literally don't even claim to go to space. So It's a parabolic flight. You're Yikes. going on a big parabolic flight. Frequent admittedly. Go ahead. So I was saying admittedly you only float for a few minutes just like a parabolic flight. You go up and you come back down. And then people just say stuff like that. It's just, it's just kind of sad. Honestly. Frequency says Project Paperclip, anyone? I don't know what that means. 1945, the U.S. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, which is like an, an encyclopedia over here. He's got all the answers. <laughs> but it Project Paperclip is when basically at the end of the World War II, all the Nazi scientists were exported out of Germany and over here to America, and they started NASA. Boom. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Tim Pryor says, find me a part for a 1939 Model T since nobody makes those parts anymore, does that mean that car did not exist? Same way with the technology back then with NASA. I think they're saying with regards to NASA not being able to do things that they were able to do. Not doing CGI. It's they really they, not the same thing because we've got bigger and better cars that go faster and travel more efficiently than the old cars. So we made improvements in that technology. It didn't just disappear. So not the same. This mm -hmm. one coming in from Tim Pryor again says... I'm assuming when you say Globers, you mean everybody that has not watched YouTube videos and believes it. Am I right? And then says, same way around the block? So I'll do the same argument. Why aren't planes constantly going left or right if they're just going in a circle? They use a compass. They're a clown. They use a compass up relative to normal. They just go from point A to point B. They don't have to go left or right. It's ridiculous. <laughs> this one from Earth. <laughs> Tim Pryor says the formula of buoyancy literally relies on gravity. Everything you're saying agrees with gravity. You just don't want to say the word. Actually, the principle predates the formula that put the little g in there. And it hijacked Coulomb's law effectively, meaning that there's an electrostatic attraction. If you look at it, they're very similar. Then people say, oh, it came after, it didn't hijack it, meaning it hijacked the phenomena, which is electrostatic. I don't care to say the word. Gravity is actually no, nothing more than incoherent dielectric acceleration or incoherent magnetism. And that's all that it is. That's all that is provable. The problem is that there isn't something called the theory of relativity, making gigantic balls and vacuums fly around each other. That's all made up nonsense, and it's not even logically viable on its face. This one coming in from Tim Pryor says, In my spare time, I'm an amateur astronomer. I've seen Jupiter's moons catching shadows on it and have calculated Jupiter's rotation. Please explain. Never mind you guys like using cameras to look at planets. 
then continues, like an EMP pulse can fry computers, which means newer cars would be inoperable, but older cars were not. I think that maybe they meant to, for that to be two separate uh, super chats. This is tough. I can't tell where one starts and the other ends. They said, we'll give you the f first one. They said, in my spare time, I'm an amateur astronomer. I've seen Jupiter's moons catching shadows on it and have calculated Jupiter's rotation. Please explain. Yeah, so uh, it's it's long time been known that they try to claim that proved that the Earth is heliocentric, but I actually know it works in a neo tychonic system. So that doesn't mean anything. The fact that there seemingly is something relatively moving in the sky to one another and then moving around the Earth. I don't really see how that somehow proves that the Earth is a ball that spins in a vacuum. It's very ignorant. With regards to the idea of whether or not NASA had technology that they cannot replicate today and that they could not move beyond or improve on, they say, Tim Pryor says, like an EMP pulse can fry computers, which means newer cars would be inoperable, but older cars were not. We have new technology. The radiation belt will mess up that technology the same way. I thought you guys did research. We understand the story. We understand what you're saying. It's just a very convenient story that you can't actually recreate the technology to go back to the moon. Now they're claiming that they're going to, but they seemingly can't get off the freaking ground. I don't care if you want to believe their fairy tales. <laughs> We're pointing out that it's stupid. Brandon Connell says Lake Way 3 is the big building next to the causeway in New Orleans. Let me go back to their original oh, question. Oh, okay. So their original question was, I've personally been on top of Lake Way 3 building in New Orleans. You can physically see the North Shore, but you can't on the ground, no matter what. Please explain. Uh, sorry, I was totally zoned out. What? No I don't. Worries. I don't. I mean, I would have to see a picture to know exactly what he's talking about. He's saying that you stand on a building, you can see the North Shore, but you can't see the ground. So, what is he saying? You can't see the ground because of curvature. Well, that would mean that there's no you curvature. You can physically mm -hmm. see the North Shore, which I. Uh, I don't understand. I still don't understand. I, like Brandon, is the Lake Three building? Is that like out uh, just a bit offshore? When you say you can see the physical shore or the North Shore. They said you can physically see the North Shore, but you can't while you're on the ground, no matter what. Oh, oh okay. okay. So, yeah, yeah, but again, so you can see further when you lift up, when you go higher. But, hey, ask him if you sit there on the ground and you tape a time lapse all day, every day, will it change? The answer is yes. There will be certain days that you can mm. see further, and the, the alleged obstruction constantly moves up and down because it's not physical. It's pretty simple. Tim Pryor says, I want to set up a debate with Witsit. Give me the details of how and when. That sounds like a good alternative. Like I said, Fight the Flat Earth has debated. Austin and Fight the Flat Earth have clashed a lot. This may be a good one. Tim Pryor seems like he's very well-read and experienced. So, Tim Pryor, if you email me at moderndaydebate at gmail.com, we'll see if we can make that work. And that's moderndaydebate, no spaces, no hyphens at gmail.com and let me know and we'll see what we can make happen triumph the insult dog says went on international flight weeks ago saw a curve oh, well you disagree with sure the world's did. most famous physicist. <laughs> the geometry says that you actually can't see the curvature from a flight so you can't even see it from 60 miles up so this is awkward your model says that you wouldn't see it. So something's going on. Also, Black actually, over a flat surface. flying 80,000 feet up in the air say they don't see curvature. So I don't know. But this guy on YouTube said so in a super right. chat because he's triggered that we're dominating the Globers. But the, the truth is that <laughs> if you were over a flat surface and then there was a local light source, you'd have something called a circumference of light. And that would actually give you the illusion of some type of convexity, uh, which is pretty ironic. And, of course, your eyes see in a circle, but obviously the Earth is not flat. And like she said, you can talk to pilots all day. They'll tell you that either they don't see a curvature. You guys just say it. And if you say it boldly enough with an ad hom about how we're stupid, the Earth becomes a ball magically. Mm. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Samir Farsane says, what's at the edges of the flat Earth or gradient to well, nobody said there was an edge. All we can go to is um, furthest we can get to is Antarctica. And we don't even know that Antarctica goes all the way around the Earth. So there is no edge. It's just a shoreline like a lake. What's beyond the shoreline? I don't know. Tim Pryor says, 
Austin really needs to learn the definition of religion. Flat Earth is the epitome of the definition of religion. Well, no, maybe. actually, it's not. Not we really. Up, no. Like that could be a juicy debate. In particular, flat versus globe. Chris G says, as you approach a mountain while at sea level, would you see the top of the mountain first or not, and why? Hi, James. Hi, Chris. Good to see you. What was the, the question was for us? What was the question? Yep, they said, as you approach a mountain while at sea level, would you see the top of the mountain first or not? Most likely, probably, yes, you would see the top of the mountain first. That doesn't mean that the earth is a ball. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Instead of the entire thing growing large at the same time, which is what you'd expect. Because that's not how it works. That's not how horizontal planes and angular resolution work. Yeah, an angle of view. That, That is how it works. Oh, no. okay. So what you're saying is then that we are seeing the literal physical curvature blocking it at its actual location then. When you say that we never do, and your model says that we never do, you see how what they get to do is just make all kinds of contradictory claims simultaneously. It's insane. It's so funny. It just doesn't matter. If you want to be honest, listen to what we actually said. Research the subject honestly. Uh, you don't have to fit in with everyone else. That's the, that's the truth. You know, Some people are just afraid. This one coming in from, or near the end, Chris G says, at what point after joining, quote, the government, are you briefed on the flatness of the earth and begin your lifelong journey to lie to everyone forever? You get access to space lasers right afterwards. It's great. Mm, they give you free shirts. I think they're, for Austin and uh, and Karen B., I think they're kind of trying to raise, a you might say, a sociological argument saying, yeah. Why is it, I mean, maybe I'm reading too much into this. I think they're saying, like, why is it that, like, is it really the case that everybody in the government, like, there's been no whistleblowers out of all the people that have been told by NASA or the government that the Earth is Mm -hmm. uh, actually flat? Yeah, there's whistleblowers. There's tons of subject matter experts. If you go to Mark Sargent's channel, there's people from the military, all to all, all kinds of people that come forward and say that the Earth is flat. They just don't get any public recognition or time on on mainstream media <laughs> there's actually two alleged astronauts a soviet union and a polish astronaut who literally came out and said that the earth is flat you guys say there's no whistleblowers but in addition we don't think that everyone's in on some major lie with millions of people it's a straw man that you use to try to make it look improbable but we know it's just compartmentalization most people believe the lie so again it's the same thing it's just sophistry where you gotta lie about what we actually think which is pretty interesting huh this one from Tim Pryor says, no, it doesn't. Stop deceiving. The glare makes it appear to change size. Use a solar filter. This has been shown to you guys a billion times. Using the solar filter doesn't prove that the Earth is a ball. Even your Stellarium says that it changes angular size, and your model says it changes angular size throughout the year. And you say, no, just because of because of whatever, it changes angular size. It yeah. wouldn't change angular size during the day. You just draw man that onto us because you have to make up stuff. This one coming in from Tim Pryor says, flat Earth has no model, so there's no straw manning it. Then says, so now I'm also lying. <laughs> Like millions, is that all you have? Well, whenever you tell lies, yeah, then you're lying. And yeah, it's a straw man if you make up what you don't understand. Like straw man examples of flat earth. We don't have to have an entire model to know that it's a straw man when you say, if the earth was flat, there wouldn't be a horizon. If the earth is flat, we know for a fact that the sun would change size. If the earth was flat, we'd see across the entire world. (laughs) <laughs> These are straw man fallacies due to your lack of understanding and basic incompetence. That's what it's called, a straw man fallacy. You got it, and this one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Rumpley Depew says, Witsit, when does the sun or the sum of angles in a triangle equate to more than 180 degrees? When dealing with spherical geometry, helpful when navigating the earth. That isn't true. Geodetic surveying in the modern time never does anything over 180 degrees. The globe earth just claims that as a talking point. And then they bring up some paper from 1850 or 1796, but no one ever does that. They also don't even understand the actual data of that. And in addition, if you just presuppose spherical geometry, I don't think you're actually proving that the earth is a sphere. This one from Tim Pryor says, stop 
Lying, mm-hmm. you do not have to get approved tra- to travel there. You can take a cruise there anytime. You can get jobs there anytime. Love how everybody has to be lying if they disagree with you. <laughs> just again, okay. you double down. Karen, but you got it. They just doubling down the lie. They're just doubling down and making lies. Like, I mean, go look it up for yourself. It's it's you can go look into it on your own. You don't have to believe what we say or what that guy says. You can just go try to do it yourself. Go look it up. Have fun. Yep. Yep. This one coming in from only like folks for real. No more questions. This one coming in from do appreciate it. Wolkenstein says, Hey James, hey modern day debate. Flat earthers, why do hurricanes rotate in opposite directions on the northern half of Earth? than they do on the southern half. They actually don't always do that, but you can look up yeah. something called a solenoid or a bar magnet, and you would get a similar type of effect with the magnetic flux readings that we have and with the solenoid bar magnet type of effect over the Earth, electromagnetic field or a magnetic field. And they actually don't always go uh, the exact opposite directions, though that's been debunked. And I'll also just now explain to everyone that even Einstein will tell you that if the sky is moving around the Earth, it would be a translation of centrifugal force onto the Earth so, I mean, it's just, you guys don't even know what relativity says. And that's why you guys ask this type of question because Tim, you just read Google articles. Tim Pryor says, I would love to see flat earthers start using flat earth technology since we Globers are so dumb. And it's funny that flat earthers claim the moon is local, but then claim we've never been there. Think about it. I shouldn't have to explain. You should, because that's ridiculous. No one thinks you can land on it. We don't claim it's solid. Sorry, I'm not trying to take all the questions. I'm just kind of over it. Like, we don't claim that it's solid. We don't claim it's something you can walk on. So, yeah, that's right. You can't go land on the moon or go to the moon because it's not something that you can even go to. And, yeah, it's much more local than what they say that it is. And you said, where's the flat earth technology? Well, why don't you go talk to the Nazis because they actually had electrophytic propulsion devices using ether physics and throwing <laughs> out throwing out the uh, relativistic physics. So, interesting. Tim Pryor says, loved how Witsit thought he debunked meteorites with a bunch of words Salad. Yep, that's why museums will pay thousands or millions of dollars for a piece of rock. It's money laundering, bro. What's yeah, maybe so, like their pictures, but what's so funny it is be. I it's not word salad when I say all meteors come from the same six radiant sources in the sky. Tim you Friars. just don't know what that is or how to respond, so you just try to dismiss it with your little two word phrase. Nobody has ever observed a rock falling out of the sky and hitting the surface of the earth. The only reason they call them meteorites is because they have high iron content, which is not a foreign material. That is all material found here on the surface of earth. It's funny how they they finally find space rocks, but they find them on earth. Exactly. They claim claim 70% of the moon rocks we have were found on the earth. It's hilarious. Stupid beta energy says it's very simple. It's it. The sun doesn't change angular size because it's big and far away, not small and within the sky over a pizza earth. Uh, well, we get your claim and your straw man of a pizza earth. We showed you that magnetic holography seems to be a viable option based on the longitudinal azimuth and declination readings over the course of a year. And that Stellarium, which uses your model itself, says that it does change angular size throughout the day. Then you guys say, oh, well, it's just not enough to matter. So your entire claim went out the window. You begging the question of presupposing something means nothing. We don't claim the size, the shape, or the distance. We see a circle that looks like a light, and we don't know where exactly it is or what it's encompassed in. So you can desperately try to straw man all you want. But anyone that wants to know the truth of this conversation is going to do one thing. They're going to go research the veracity of the claims from the globe earth and see if that's actually true and anyone that doesn't want to know the truth will frantically try to chant ridiculous comments like that and never go look into what the actual evidence says tim Pryor says first stop quoting einstein because einstein never thought the earth was flat and no mickelson morally did prove the earth was not moving stop repeating what people say and read the paper from them themselves I literally have read the paper. I'm sure you haven't. I understand all about it. It's called Detecting Earth's Motion Through the Ether. It didn't show a fringe shift. It showed one-sixth of what was predicted. It's even less than that now. It was supposed to show 30 kilometers per second revolution or orbit around the sun. It didn't show that. But what it showed is that the Earth wasn't moving combined with mickelson gale pearson which matched the sidereal rotation prediction within 98%, which is literally how we have gyroscopes with the static effect to this day, which shows that it's the sky moving around the Earth. It's not actually... It's not actually the earth moving and this is just objective. And so they threw the ether out because if there was an ether, then that would mean that the earth was not moving. And now quantum mechanics 
popular physicists are now coming out and saying it looks like we're going to have to reintroduce the ether, but they can't figure out how to make it work with Michelson Morley because it would mean that the earth is not moving. This is what it actually happens in reality, not your stories. This one coming in from, and the last one, Tim Pryor says, no, what I'm saying is the ceiling is normally the exact same shape as the room. So yes, looking at the ceiling will tell you the shape of the room. We're not looking at the ceiling. We're looking at lights in the sky. We can't literally see a, a, a ceiling. We don't go touch a ceiling. So that's just a ridiculous question. I could tell that it was actually someone being serious. I thought earlier, it's just a ridiculous question. Nothing that's on the <laughs> ceiling in the ceiling can ever tell you what the floor is. It's literally very remedial. You got it. And with that, folks want to say, hey, a couple of things first. And most importantly, we appreciate our guests. You can click on their links right now to check out their website, their YouTube channel, their Twitter. Go ahead right now. Click on their links because we're going to have the post credit scene in just a second. But, hey, I, I got to tell you, we appreciate our guests. They're the lifeblood of the channel. You had some exposure to them right now. And so whether you're listening via YouTube or podcast, you can click on their links as we put the description Put their links in the description box for both the YouTube channel and podcast. I want to say thank you, Witsit, Karen B., Amy, and Taylor. It's been a true pleasure to have you tonight. Thank you. I don't Just re you research it for yourself and stay open-minded. Don't worry about what other people try to tell you about it. Just be honest. Look into the globe. Keep asking questions. Thanks so much for being with us. And, folks, hope you felt like your side was treated fairly. We really do want to welcome you, whether you be Flat Earth, Globe Earth, Christian, Atheist, Politically Left, Politically Right, you name it. All of the strange creatures in between those, uh, you could say, differences as well. We hope you feel welcome. We do appreciate you. We hope you are having a great night. I'll be back in just a moment with the post credit scene, letting you know about upcoming debates. You don't want to miss them. Hit that subscribe button as we have many more juicy debates coming up. And with that, I'll be back in just a moment. One last thanks to our guests. want to say thanks so much you guys we are pumped to have you here let me just squeeze this picture down very embarrassing you guys i am thrilled to have you here want to say thanks for being with us at modern day debate we hope you felt welcome no matter what walk of life you were from whether you be christian atheist muslim agnostic you name it whether you're like nah, i'm really more just like skeptic undecided whatever you want to call it we hope you feel welcome we do appreciate you hanging out here it's always fun here at modern day debate we've got a lot of juicy debates coming up you don't want to miss them i've got to tell you First, I want to say hello to you in the old live chat. CGI fan done. Thanks for coming by. Creature, good to see you. Big Pine Sailing, thanks for coming by. As well as Amy Newman, good to see you. Iron Horse, glad to have you. Ravon Randwolf, thanks for dropping in. Stupid Beta Energy, thanks for dropping in. Kurt Hanneman, good to see you. Mr. White, thanks for dropping in. Origami, glad that you are here. It says, thanks, James. Thank you. Seriously, it's my pleasure. We hope you felt like you got a fair shot. In other words, that your position got a fair shot, as it's important to us. We really do. I told someone today, they asked me, they said, why did you start Modern Day Debate? And the truth is, I said, I used to go on debate channels myself, and someday I'll probably debate again. But right now, like, I'm excited. I love building Modern Day Debate. It's, it's something that I'm passionate about. It's the vision that I think we can all agree on. Whether we be flat earth, globe earth, you name it, I think we all agree on this in particular. 
that everybody wants a neutral platform so that everybody can make their case on a level playing field. That's important to us as we really do want to give everybody a fair shot. We don't want moderators jumping in and systematically taking one side in the debate. That looks pretty sketch. I mean, really, seriously, it's gross that channels do that. That's why I started Modern Day Debate is I thought, there's something better than this. YouTube deserves a better class, a debate channel, and we're going to give it to them. And we are doing that as we want to say thank you guys for helping us grow. You guys, for real, the debaters and you guys are the reason that we have grown so much. Seriously, it has grown monstrously. We appreciate that. And seriously, it's I'm beyond thankful as you guys, all the different ways that you've helped Modern Day Debate. For example, subscribing really does help. Seriously, it kind of gives, you could say, social credibility. It's like Amazon reviews. If somebody has like a good review on Amazon and then it's like, well, that's, that's good. I mean, one's better than zero. But if they have 4,000 or 79,600, that means a lot more where you're kind of like, wow, it's like people enjoy this. So seriously, that is a way. But also, I've got to say there are other ways. So for example, hitting that like button really does make a difference. That boosts the video in the algorithm. We're at 329 likes. That's a lot. However, we could easily get to 350. For real, that is not far away. As we have 329, that means only about 21 more likes. And we'll be at 350, which is pretty monstrous. I mean, that'll be beyond a third of a thousand. That's big for a live stream. So that does help. And especially more importantly, if you're like, well, I don't care about helping modern day debate. Well, here, that's all right. I, I don't blame you. You probably just met us. Maybe you could think of it this way. If you thought your side was more persuasive in the debate, well, YouTube will recommend this video more from this neutral platform where you think that your side was more persuasive, whether you be Flat Earth or Globe Earth, YouTube will recommend it more to more people. And the video is going to get a higher ranking when people search, like let's say Flat Earth Debate on YouTube, if there are more likes on the video. So that's a good reason to do it, is maybe you just want people to hear the truth and you think that truth prevailed in this debate. So that's another reason. But the other thing is this. You guys have helped so much in terms of all of the shares uh, like I, I can the creator studio the little youtube kind of like background scene i could see how many shares videos get and you guys do share our content a ton which we really appreciate if you let's say have a discord group or maybe a twitter thread or a facebook group where you want to share this video go ahead and click that share button you can share the link and then somebody else will see it and be like hey cool that really does help a lot as hey we think this is a vision and a mission that everybody can get behind, whether they be flat earth, globe earth, Christian atheist, politically left, politically right, whatever you are, whatever walk of life you come from, everybody can get behind the idea that everybody, every position deserves a fair shot to make its case. And for us, that's important. And it's not just important in the sense of being fair to everybody, but also we want there to be liberty. If people are going to say something that's considered out there or kind of like, oh, it's kind of like far-fetched or kind of controversial or, ooh, we want them to have the chance to say it. We want people to have the freedom to make their case for what they want to make their case on. That's important. And a lot of people might say, well, James, well, what if people spread misinformation or, you know, dangerous, harmful ideas? And that's where our third value comes in because we care about our values. They're important to us. And our third value is competition. In particular, when we let a thousand flowers bloom, when we let the chips fall where they may, believe me, folks, you're going to see it. It's going to be the case. The cream is going to rise to the top. The best arguments are going to win out. And not only is that just logical, it just makes sense. I mean, in the world, the best things went out. The best car manufacturers outlast the ones that put crappy cars on the road. Or it might be any type of competition. The best athletes rise to the top. The best arguments rise to the top, too. We believe that, and the empirical data suggests that's the case. Petty and Cassiapo, I think I've told you guys before, I'm working on my PhD in psychology. I can tell you the empirical data does suggest that rather than peripheral factors, so for example, whether or not a speaker is good looking or has a good sense of humor, more importantly, the more lasting influences 
are logical arguments. Logical arguments change people's minds more strongly and for a longer amount of time. Peripheral things like, oh, well, but what if this person spreading disinformation is, you know, they've got a sense of humor or they're charismatic. And so they just kind of charm people into believing in their misinformation or their bad arguments. Well, the data doesn't suggest that's going to happen. The data suggests that, like I said, when we let a thousand flowers bloom, when we let the chips fall where they may, the best arguments are going to win. It's that simple. Want to say hello to you in the old live chat, JJ Hemp Hempcrete Bear. Thanks for coming by. Malavia says calling so and so dishonest isn't attacking him. Most sane people here can uh, tell he's being dishonest. Let's see. TNA Plastic, thanks for coming by. And Trillian, thanks for dropping in. What? Glad to have you here in the old live chat. Tom Buddhist, thanks for dropping in. And Stupid Beta Energy, thanks for dropping in. Globe Asunder, thanks for coming by. But Mr. White, glad to have you here. One Neo, thanks for dropping in, as well as Lori Wagner, thanks for coming by. Good to see you. C. Pames, happy to have you with us. I see you there in the old live chat. And want to say, though, for real, thanks, guys, for all of your support. You guys have supported us in so many ways, and we appreciate that. If you didn't know, we do indeed have a modern-day debate Patreon which helps as we are trying to put on bigger and better debates all the time. So if you haven't, if you didn't know that, it is in the description box, Modern Day Debate, Patreon, as well as, hey, I mean, there's also Modern Day Debate channel memberships here on YouTube. That helps support us as well. So a couple of things that you might not have known about, but also want to say Odin All Father, All Farther, thanks for coming by. Jesus died for you. Thanks for dropping in. I see you there in the old live chat. Jake Green, I see you there. How are you? See you in the live chat. Amanda, good to see you. Thanks for all of your support of Modern Day Debate. Oh, yeah, Amanda, just in case, if you don't, I know it's super busy, so I hope you don't feel pressured or swamped or anything or like when I ask. If you happen to know about locations and what uh, venues might work or any potential pricing for our conference in October or potentially November now, we'll, like I am pumped to hear about it. Feel free to always get in touch. I don't know if I gave you my number. I feel like... I hope I did. I could have sworn I did, but just to be sure, let me know if I didn't because I just want to be sure you can get a hold of me with that info. But I want to say, Trillian, thanks for coming by. Thanks for coming by. Gene Lorette said, James should be Earth's moderator. I appreciate that, Gene. Thanks so much. Seriously, it means a lot. And Brady D, thanks for coming by. Seriously, we hope you are doing